But Google is likely the most slammed as it processes 90% of searches in Europe. Google says, please note that this form is an initial effort. The search giant does not say whether there will be a notation when search results are edited, though it does inform requesters that it may inform webmasters whose content is removed from our search results as a result of your complaint. Those web pages whose links are removed from a person's Google search results will remain active on the web, and Google is giving itself the right to let the page owner know that he or she has been scorched from a person's results. Google also notes that it will not automatically comply with all removal requests. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts & Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term it's the Onion Radio News. All seven deadly sins were committed at a church bake sale. This is Doyle Redland reporting. Avarice, sloth, envy, lust, gluttony, pride, and wrath. All seven of the fabled deadly sins were committed on Sunday at the twice-annual bake sale at St. Mary's of the Immaculate Conception Church. According to St. Mary's treasurer, Beth Ellen Coyle, church-sponsored events are a notorious breeding ground for these treasonous acts against the Lord God. This is supposed to be about the glorification of God, not violating His Word. Do that and you're no better than that cheap strumpet Melissa Wyckoff with those sinful chocolate cookies of hers. The seven Seven deadly sins were first outlined in the 5th century by Gregory the Great, who himself was, as indicated by his very name, toying dangerously with the sin of pride. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. You can bring up anything you want. Just dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. It is the live Saturday edition of the program, and with you here tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. Uh, so, by the way, before we jump into the, the first story of the night, I want to welcome our brand-newest radio affiliate, WNNG-FM 99.9 in Unadilla. Or Unadilla? Dia? I'm sure it's Unadilla if it's Georgia. Welcome to, uh, I didn't check on it and I apologize. If you're an Unadilla and you're offended, then I apologize <laughs> for that too. They're probably just uh, amused. But welcome. Welcome back, actually. WNNG used to be an affiliate of Free Talk Lives in the past. And, uh, you know, things happen in the radio business. Programming gets shuffled around. Sometimes you, you know, sometimes you lose a station, and then they come back. It's so, happened a lot with Free Talk Live. I don't know if it's happened a lot. There's I don't still, know. There's a lot of stations we've lost. We haven't gotten back. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the good news is Free Talk Live gets on more over time than we lose. So that's why we're at now 150 radio stations, radio affiliates, coast to coast, and are we beyond. at 150? We are. I we love are. that. It's a big number. It's exciting. It's exciting. I'm excited to be here, and you know, it's and all it, thanks to listeners like you. Every station along the way has uh, is one station closer to 150, but uh, you know, when Unadilla comes on, then they're the 150th. They are, and so welcome aboard, and if you're new to the show, well, you already probably know, if you've listened once before, that Free Talk Live is a little different from the other talk radio shows out there. First of all, we have two hosts. Now, that's not completely unusual. There are some talk shows like that. Uh, but uh, the two-host thing on Free Talk Live, and or three, sometimes you know during the week we have a third person in here as well, because uh, we do this show seven nights a week. And uh, so having multiple hosts, I think, is important because it keeps people's ego in check, which can be a problem in talk radio, where the, the talk radio host has no one to check their ego, and so they just go off into la la land. I think of, that's important. Of believing that you know they are the most important thing in the world. It's an echo chamber, and yeah. many times talk hosts, um, you know, they're not taking the calls. They don't have somebody in the studio, and they're mm -hmm. not taking the calls. So, 
you know, when they when they do take calls, they take the calls that agree with them or that are on topic or whatever. Whereas on Free Talk Live, we take calls that we're you know, if you disagree with us, you're likely to get on faster than if you agree with us. There's a good chance of that. So we're here to take your calls about anything, which is another difference between our show and the rest is that we're open phones all the time. I mean, every hour of the show, every night of the week, we'll take your calls about anything. 855-450-FREE. Go ahead and give it a try. If you don't believe it, uh, you will find out it is true. 855-450-3733. And the other thing is when you call Free Talk Live, there's not some ridiculous screening process. You, you don't have to tell your whole life story. You don't have to give us personal information. Uh, if you want to tell it, you know, if you want to use a fake name, if you want to use a fake location, <laughs> that's up to you. And we'd prefer to know one word what you want to talk about. You don't have to get into detail. Let's get into the detail on the air with us. 855 450 free and Skype in at username lrn.fm. Story from the Pacific Standard, psmag.com. A couple months ago, the sex education notice that came home in my nine year old son's backpack. I didn't realize in our district, sex ed starts in the fourth grade. Another sign of the state having more access to my baby than sometimes I wish. When I handed the note to my mate at the dinner table, our son said, uh, with something of a proud smile, I told Ms. Reverbry we've already talked about it at home, unquote. The mate and I looked at each other and obviously had the same thought. Two weeks before, the class had been learning about electricity. The teacher had gotten stuck on some questions about batteries, so she'd turned to our son, who was able to explain to the class exactly how batteries charge, recharge, and discharge. He's learned a lot about electricity at home, and quite a lot about sex. You know, my mate said to our son, this is one of those times when you have to not help the teacher, even if you know how something works. <laughs> I busted out laughing at the admonition. Your dad is right, I said, composing myself. It's entirely possible that you know more about sex than they do, but there's some stuff some parents might not want their kids to know, so you have to keep a lid on it. I know, he answered. But really, this was the kid who in preschool answered a teacher's good morning, how are you today, with a, I'm fine, but my mother is menstruating, so her uterine lining is sloughing. Oh boy. I just shrugged and explained to her that he'd seen blood on the toilet paper and he wanted to know if I was okay. So I'd explained that it was normal and he wanted to hear about the mechanics, like he always does about everything. Now, Mark, you've got a six-year-old son now? Is That's he six right. Now? Can you relate to this? I mean, the the wanting to know about everything. You know, yeah, he wants to know. Yes, he he asks lots of, lots and lots of questions. Uh, and you know, young people ask questions like this. Children, in this case, ask questions like this. And a lot of parents don't want to be forthright with the answers if it's if it's the wrong question. Or a question that uh, that makes them feel uncomfortable. Well, I don't know that kids necessarily always want to know as much as this young man wants to know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they might ask questions, uh, but a lot of times I really kind of think that, you know, that they, they want half the answer that I give. Hmm. Like, I have a tendency to over-answer questions, and I get the impression that uh, that my son Jack would just prefer if I gave him a short answer. She laughed. As he went off to play, she reminded me of the time that the class had somehow gotten onto the discussion of baby cows, and one child had posed the question of how the cow gets out of the mommy's tummy. But then uh, teachers glanced nervously at each other until one of them sputtered, through the birth canal. My son's hand shot up. Is that the same as the vagina? Oh, God. Apparently, he also pointed out How that helpful. <laughs> the baby must be in a uterus, not a tummy, because if the baby was in the stomach, it would get digested, and that wouldn't be good. He does know, yeah. This was also the only kid in preschool who said, most boys have penises and scrotums, and most girls have clitorises and vaginas. I presume it's because my son knows so much about sex that sometimes his friends have tried to ask me questions. <laughs> I never know what to do in such a situation. Ordinarily, I'll answer all children's questions in an honest manner and make sure I evince no shame about the question or the answer, whether it's about war, disability, disease, sex, arguments between neighbors, whatever. But in this cultural climate of negativity around sex, can I really answer another person's child's question about sex? One day, nine-year-old Elaine started asking me about birth control out of the blue. I said to her, listen, I need to call your parents and ask them if it's okay for me to talk to you about this, okay? She said that'd be fine, so I did. I didn't expect her mother's response. 
oh god yes please answer any questions she has and tell her it's okay to go to you anytime with those questions said her mom <laughs> i told her that that'd be fine but that i'd also ask elaine if it were okay for me to just let her mother know what we talked about my maid has always been a little more reserved with adult information this is a general difference between us one that's pretty apparent to everyone a friend once asked our son what it's like to be raised by auntie ma'am and kermit the frog but I have to be forthcoming with the goods, especially when it comes to sex. My work on children born with atypical sex has put me in the position of advising other parents that it's critical to be calm and honest in response to children's questions about sex. I kind of have to practice what I preach. It's a problem, though, that I've become so comfortable talking with children about sex because most adults aren't. And we've got a pedophile panicked culture that just seems to be adding to the great silence. One time, my son was out to lunch with a friend and me, and the friend and I were talking about my work on intersex. My son stopped me to ask me to remind him what intersex is. I explained we were talking about people who have a different kind of sex anatomy than the average boy or the average girl. I explained that, for example, some of them have a short penis or big clitoris. Oh, right, he answered. I reminded him of the names of a few friends of ours who are intersex, so he'd remember we're talking about real people. Suddenly, I became aware that the tables all around us had gone silent. I'll bet they had. Then there was the time in third grade when my son wanted to bring our pet rat Treacle in for show and tell. After my son and I Please had Please tell me they have an intersex rat. Treacle's care and question feeding his habits and his relations with us, one little boy had a question. What's under Treacle's tail? And we'll find out here in a moment. <laughs> What's under Treacle's tail? And this brings up a larger question, a larger discussion about talking with kids about sex. What's the appropriate thing to do? It's, you know, should the answer be, oh, well, the stork flies in and brings the baby. Or should you get a little more detailed and be honest? And there's a bigger question coming up here in moments. 855 450 free. You can take control here. It's Free Talk Live. You know Lumber Liquidators for having the best selection of flooring at the lowest prices. And right now, you can buy one floor and get 50% off another on their thickest and best dream home laminates. No games, no gimmicks, just huge savings off already ridiculously low prices. Plus, get great deals on pre-finished hardwood and Morningstar bamboo. So go to LumberLiquidators.com to find the store nearest you. Special financing is available. But hurry, this buy one, get one sale ends Tuesday, June 3rd. Hi everyone, I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, now well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. want to lose weight? Listen up, because an incredibly effective weight loss supplement is being given out to 100 callers right now. Because it's so potent, please take no more than one capsule a day. Be one of the first 100 callers to get a risk-free trial. 1-800-968-9269. Supplies are limited because this product is proven and can cause dramatic weight loss. It's called AF+. Plus. Take one capsule just once a day as directed, and you can experience maximum weight loss. 
pounds in days. It's all natural, safe, and healthy. But if your weight loss with AF Plus is too dramatic, please decrease use and only take it every other day. Only 100 callers are guaranteed to get a risk-free trial. Call 1-800-968-9269. Mayo Clinic research proves that carrying fat in your midsection raises your risk of heart disease, stroke, high blood pressure, even cancer. If you need to lose weight, you absolutely must call now. 1-800-968-9269. 1-800-968-9269. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We're launching here into more of the program where you can take control of the airwaves. You don't have to necessarily talk about what we bring to the table here tonight. And uh, that we've got other stuff to talk about as well, including uh, including just a horrifying story about a police raid and a baby in a crib. And there's all kinds of things that could happen with a police raid and a baby in a crib. Most of them aren't good. We'll uh, give you more details if we get a chance. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Now we're talking about the uncomfortable topic for a lot of people of children, your children, and talking to them about sex. Because it seems like a lot of people leave that up to somebody else. I mean, I don't know uh, if you recall much of the conversations you might have had with your parents, but... Mine weren't particularly descriptive or uh, useful on on the topic. I got a book. Oh yeah, yeah. What was that called? It was I don't know. Was it a picture book? Yeah, but it you know it it talked more about uh, I wasn't that interested in you know like fertilization and that sort of thing. Um, you know, it didn't really show pictures of the, the of the the actual act. Right? Was it like when mommy loves daddy really really much? No, they... it was more scientific than that. Okay. So we're talking about that. You're welcome to share your experiences uh, as a parent or a child. Eight fifty five four fifty free. You know how was it that how your parents uh, how your parents approached this subject? How did it affect you later on in life? Uh, there's a lot of different aspects to this, and we can continue. Uh, you know, something I was uh, doing the other night, Mark, was trying out my magic mud, and I couldn't help but think, gosh. You know, this would be a lot of fun. I mean, first of all, it was a lot of fun for me to do it. Just, you know, just have somebody else there and we both tried it at the same time and it was neat. I think having a child try My Magic Mud would be really entertaining um, simply because there's just, it's just so much fun. And it it's messy, but in a fun way, you know, you know it's going to be messy. And it also, like, gets your teeth really clean. Yeah, it's a teeth whitener and at the same time sort of detoxifies your mouth. Um, it uh, It's activated charcoal and benzene clay and it bonds to the bacteria and the bad stuff in there and just kind of grabs them and out they go. Yeah, so imagine where normally if you're brushing your teeth you would have foamy white from, you know, your toothbrush or toothpaste. This would be all black. Yeah. It's like total black sort of coming out of your black. mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and so the look is pretty entertaining and uh, and a lot of fun. But and and I think little boys really, um, you know, maybe little girls too, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, children are going to be excited about the idea of, you know, hey, this is completely different than the toothpaste I've used in the past. Now, it's a powder um, instead of a toothpaste, but 
tooth powders have a long history as far as uh, oral hair care goes. Some extra care needs to be used when you're using the product because it's a powder rather it's a little than messy. a paste. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, it's a lot of fun to do it, and it actually works. The first application really did remove stains yeah. uh, from a tooth, yeah. from teeth. I mean, look, you, no joke. Yeah, there's no. There, you've got to try this to uh, believe, and it doesn't do that sort of freakish white thing in two yeah. minutes. No chemical white. In two I mean. minutes, you'll you'll notice whiter teeth within. Three or four applications, likely, your teeth will be as white as your teeth are supposed to be. You know, I've tried the, the strips in mm -hmm. the past, and I've tried the whitening paste. Walking around it's for a like bunch 20, of nonsense. 20 minutes for this thing in your mouth. I'm sorry. I've never noticed anything from them. Mm. Never noticed. I, don't I know. noticed this after one application. One application. It was created by uh, Jessica Armand. She's a liberty-loving homeschool mother of three. And uh, she's going to be at Porkfest, where we're going this year. Yes. And there's actually going to be an opportunity to try it out and uh, see the benefits. Smart. But if you want to get this, if you're not going to the Porcupine Freedom yeah, Festival this year, just go to mymagicmud.com and get it. It's it's twenty five dollars, shipping included. Is that all? Yeah. Wow. Ninety applications. It's absolutely worth it. Once you try this, you'll be like, oh yeah, this is worth it. So yeah. it's great. Mymagicmud.com. All right, let's uh, continue here. We're talking about the curious. Children uh, in your life, if you're a parent, and how to handle one of the most difficult, for a lot of parents, sex. Uh, difficult topics, that is sex. You know, being honest about sex, more specifically honest about one aspect. And she hasn't really gotten to that in the story uh, from psmag.com, where she, the author is sort of citing some different instances about how her child's different. She's got a young uh, young male. He's, uh, I don't know, like six or nine or something like that. And very curious about and, how things work. Yeah, and, and knowledgeable as well. Like, he's when he's explained how things work, he retains that information and then get, brings it up in class, well, which can bring up some awkward situations. You remember the things you're interested in. And and, yeah. and you don't remember the things you're not interested in. Yep. Well, your son, Jack, is very interested in the solar system, for instance, or was. Now, you said he's moved on to some other yeah, topic you now. know, young, young kids move on. He's in, uh, you know, Legos. He's building the Legos of all the buildings that he's seen. But had he become interested in the reproductive systems rather than the solar system, would that have presented a difficult home sort of situation between you and your wife and trying to determine, you know, how much do we want to teach him about this? Uh, would that have been a little more awkward deciding how to go forward with, with You that? know, with, with that topic, I believe that if a, if a kid's old enough to ask a question, they're old enough to get an answer to a mm -hmm. question. Um, and it doesn't matter to what that question's about. I tend to over-explain things. So I, I believe he has a He's certainly been explained some level of uh, of this, but like I said, he doesn't have any interest in it. So psmag.com continues here where his mom is uh, giving some examples of some awkward situations that she's encountered with her son involving like a class. So they were doing show and tell. They brought their rat, the pet rat for the family, Treacle. They brought him in for show and tell. And one of the children in the class asks... What's under Treacle's tail? I, I asked, you mean those lumps? Those are Treacle's testicles, I answered, not even thinking twice. Pandemonium broke out. My son and I were baffled. What did you say that was funny, he asked me. I don't know, I answered, genuinely confused, as the teacher tried to restore order. The boy who'd asked the question piped up, but I don't know what testicles are. Another boy answered, it's where it really hurts where they punch you, making a serious punching gesture. Great, I thought to myself. Welcome to your genitals. It's where you get punched. <laughs> I asked the teacher later what she would have said in response to the question. I don't know, she said, embarrassed. I think I would have ignored it and moved on. Well, when you're in a, a teaching position, you are really in the crossfire on this one. Um, the fact is that you've got parents of all different types of kids having all different, uh, you know, ways that they think that their kids should be talked to. This is the problem with public school is the lowest common denominator will ruin it for everybody. Well, you know, whatever the lowest common denominator is, is that, you know, some parents are going to say you should have said this. And nobody can answer the way a parent wants them to answer this question. They just It just can't be done. It won't satisfy everyone. It, it, you saying. won't satisfy anyone. But, I mean, it's a scientific question. It's not even about sex. That's just a body part question. Still, though, there are people who get uncomfortable. And obviously the teacher is one of them. The, the mom says, I was stunned. This was a teacher I loved. This was a woman who, when one of her friends was dying of cancer, had been honest with our children children about why she was so sad. She had told the kids each day how her friend was doing, how much she hated cancer, and when her friend died, all the kids understood she had to go to a funeral. 
she had taught our children a shameless view of cancer and of death. But she couldn't answer a question about testicles? She explained to me that she'd have to send a note home. In it, she mentioned what happened and said that Alice, in her usual forthright and honest manner, Alice is the mom, yep. answered the question. And yet the note had a real tone of shame to it. The note that came home about sex ed seemed to have a tone, uh, tone of shame to it, too. Quote, according to state law, you have the right to review the materials and curriculum content to be used in HIV slash AIDS and other serious communicable disease prevention education as well as sex education. We'll continue. Your thoughts certainly welcome here. You can share them at 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. At 30dayfoodsupply.com, you can now purchase a one-of-a-kind product not available anywhere else. A meatless burger dry mix in four delicious flavors. With our new Oregon Trail Foods vegan burgers, all you do is add water and fry. They need no refrigeration. They're packaged in Mylar bags with an oxygen absorber for a long shelf life. They're non-GMO. They're gluten, soy, nut, and chemical-free, but they're loaded with flavor. And a good source of carbs and protein, yet low in sodium. Flavors include Italian, spicy Mexican, six vegetable and black bean olive go to 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 541-229-0010 and order today eat them every day take them camping or save them for an emergency check them out at 30dayfoodsupply.com and click on the vegan burger icon that's 30dayfoodsupply.com where all of our products are produced in oregon by oregon trail foods 30dayfoodsupply.com Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. <laughs>
This is Free Talk Live. It's a live Saturday edition of the program, and you can share your thoughts here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Can you go too far in sex education for children? The mom here at uh, psmag.com is talking about all these instances where her child, and he's fairly young, uh, nine, six, somewhere in that range, uh, that her child has uh, quite a bit of knowledge about sex and what its purpose is and, you know, the mechanics to some extent. I mean, that he's been he's been asking questions and they've been giving him honest answers um, when they've been raising him. And obviously, he's going to take that information into the school. He's going to take that information to his friends. He's going to to spread information like that. And that could lead to uncomfortable circumstances with other parents, with teachers, for instance. So is it, uh, is it too far to get into detail with kids about sex, about how it all works? Should it just be about storks and babies to being delivered in the middle of the night? Should it just be very, very general, the amount of information given about sex? Or should it be more specific and scientific and clinical? Well, some geniuses have thought it was a good idea to show um, you know, kids in, in their single digits porn to, show, mm. to teach them about sex. And those geniuses <laughs> have gotten lewd and lascivious charges and the, the sorts of things that, <laughs> that go on there. So I would say that there's a, there's a legal guideline. So let's continue here because uh, there's a little bit more to this story from the from psmag.com. But first, uh, Buzzbox Coffee. You can go to coffee.freetalklive.com and get a free pound of delicious coffee. It is shade grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica coffee. So this is the best of the best coffee. And coffee is grown in many different places around the world sort of third world countries oftentimes they don't have the same rules as far as pesticides go as far as unleaded gas goes so there may be lead in the soil i don't know how uh, coffee plants particularly react to lead but i do know that coffee is one of the most absorbent crops uh, on the planet i think right behind tobacco so that makes that organic certification uh, that much more important you can go to coffee.freetalklive.com and get a free pound. You'll be signing up for a subscription. You can cancel that subscription at any time. But if you don't cancel the subscription, not just because you love the coffee, but because you're helping people around the world, because every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we are able to offer another microloan that changes the lives of another family around the world, whether we're getting them a bicycle or a plow or a sewing machine or whatever it is that they need to make money, to, to make a better life for themselves, we're able to do that for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. And it takes that coffee decision right out of your hair. You don't have to think about coffee anymore because it's getting delivered to your door. Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, we continue here. Your thoughts welcome to 855-450-FREE. Plus, you can bring up whatever you want. Just want to share the remaining thoughts of the mom in this case who is describing different situations involving her child in what appears to be government school and the other students there and his level of knowledge about sex, for instance, versus theirs and the uncomfortable situations that this is generating. So she received the note home prior to sex education, which apparently is happening in fourth grade for her son. So I guess that gives you some idea of how old he is, nine, perhaps. Uh, she says, I found myself hoping, or she says, the maid and I agree the reference to HIV slash AIDS must be code to tell us they'd be talking about homosexuality. What a way to code for our gay friends. I found myself hoping the gym teacher wasn't going to teach in code. Children spent so much of their energy learning not just the native language of their parents, but their coded language, too. I remember when the movie Juno was out and a sudden rash of curiosity broke out among my son's class about what accidentally pregnant meant. I realized why my son was confused. He was thinking accidentally getting pregnant was like accidentally burning yourself because you didn't realize the stove was on. Sweetie, I explained, most of the time that people have sex, they're not having it to have a baby. They're having it because it feels good. So you can get accidentally pregnant if you're having sex for pleasure and you don't use effective birth control. He looked shocked. Apparently, I'd forgotten to mention that sex was not just for making babies. Well, she's got a little engineer on her hands, um, and I've, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised that uh, this, this stuns him. 
Think about evolution, I added, because he's also been raised a child of Darwin. If the only motivation for sex was having a baby, we wouldn't have very much sex, and our genes wouldn't be passed on very much. But if sex feels good to people or to other animals, then they'll have a lot of sex and the genes will get passed down, he said, finishing the puzzle. I nodded, and he went on. Do you and Dad ever do it for that reason? Most of the time we've done it or do it. It's for pleasure, honey. He looked into a uh, looked a combination of fascinated and chagrined. You know, you were no accident. Before that, I went off birth control to get pregnant, and we were so happy when you came into our lives. I smiled because he could see me tearing up and how much I love him. He hemmed and hawed next, and I got the sense that he wanted to know what I meant when I said it feels good. I asked him if he had that question, and he said yes. So I said it was kind of like having someone scratch your back in a place that itched and having them scratch it just right. I said that after puberty, he'd know what the special itch felt like. He nodded. So the morning of sex ed, I found myself wondering whether they were going to mention pleasure. Or would it all be about disease and pregnancy, all gloom and doom? As it turned out, I'm not even sure they mentioned sex at all. Over bagels the next Saturday morning uh, following sex ed day, I started my inquiry by asking our son what he'd learned about HIV. It's an inherited disease, he told me. You what? Get it, you get it from your mother. Oh, God. <laughs> The mate and I sighed. We explained to him that most people get HIV from sex or from dirty needles. Good Lord, why do we send our kids to these places? It's amazing. <laughs> and we explained about condoms and about drug addiction and about what makes disease inherited versus contagious. The table of four adults next to us did that thing again. They went silent. We kept talking. Our son asked why they didn't tell him this stuff at school. The maid explained that adults stupidly think that if you tell children the truth about sex, that they'll have sex earlier than they really should. He added that the evidence indicates otherwise. And I was off thinking, how funny that we can't bring ourselves to tell our children the most fundamental truth about sex, that most of the time we have sex, we have it for pleasure. As I watched my son chomp on his peanut butter bagel, I was struck by the thought that I sure have learned from him how a single act of sex can give you pleasure for years to come. I can't believe he's supposed to give me a present for Mother's Day. Many days, I can't even fathom that he came from sex. He just seems magical. So I just thought that was a fascinating uh, little story and kind of a look into a, a viewpoint that few people seem to really have about sex and, and how to communicate it to children. This is probably one of the issues that parents struggle with the most. I mean, there are certain big issues that a child can bring up, right? Like, you know, sex, drug addiction, uh, or drugs in, in general, drinking. These are like two of the big ones. And uh, approaching it in a mature manner, I think a lot of people have a tough time with because they themselves aren't very mature about sex. They've been lied to about sex when they were growing up. They were told that sex is bad, that it's bad to have sex for pleasure, that having sex outside of marriage is bad. I mean, there's all this shaming that goes on around sex sexuality and around uh you know some level of embracing that i think that's where this comes from well a lot of it um comes down to concern about if they talk to their kids about sex what are those kids going to say to other kids and then what are the other parents going to think about how their parenting style so there's a there's a lot of pressure in that uh, arena too well wouldn't that pressure be coming from the uh the parents who are ignorant and or confused or angry about this topic like that that some parent who would want to otherwise give a kid the straight dope on uh, on sex would then consider not doing so because they're worried about what intolerant parents will think when they, they hear through the grapevine that your child is knowledgeable. Clearly. That's a problem. Okay. That's a, that's a, I think that's a real problem because, you know— uh, I, Well, I mean, it's the same thing as Santa Claus. Uh, I, I was careful with talking to Jack about Santa Claus mm -hmm. um, because that's I, another tough, I tough didn't issue. want him to— you know, just every time the word Santa Claus was said, he's like, "That's not real." <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't want that. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I because what, you want to protect the lies of the other parents. What I uh, hold on, Santa Claus is a story. The story can be taken too far. Do you mm. think talking to him about Superman? You see, you've got baggage around Santa Claus. You have no baggage around <laughs> Superman. Nobody comes up and says, "Dear God, you're not talking to your kid about Superman again, are you?" It's in a story. And it should be treated as a story. It's a great story and a fun story. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. Share your thoughts. It's Free Talk Live. 
Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. What if humans found a habitable planet, set up housekeeping, and then got left alone by Earth and its big government? Will that happen in Freehold, Michael Z. Williamson's seminal work? Now available for the first time in a signed, limited hardback edition. Other books in this series are also available in paperback. I cannot recommend a modern fiction work more highly than Freehold. Earth might have left Freehold alone, but it doesn't stay that way. It's war. Get your copy right now at all major booksellers and shop.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenevention.info. Visit Keenevention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenevention.info. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and it's the live Saturday edition of the program. The toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, still to come, any other things to discuss here tonight? Mark, we're going to talk about uh, somebody who's in trouble for making their kid walk home from school. Toll-free number is 855-453-FREE, and we've got Skype. You can just Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. You care about online privacy? You need to know about ProXPN. Right now, if you're not running ProXPN, odds are good your internet service provider is logging everything you do. Every website you visit, every search term you enter, being logged, kept for up to five years in a lot of cases. 
So you can stop that from happening by getting Pro XPN, and they will encrypt your data. They will encrypt everything coming in and out of your computer, meaning your internet service provider will just see an encrypted data stream. And they will have no idea what website you're visiting or what you're doing online, and therefore they cannot report that information to any snooping government agents and or sell the information to any other corporations. Uh, you can go to proxpn.com slash FTL. You can start by downloading their software for different computer types. There's uh, Macintosh, there's Windows, there's iOS devices, Android devices. So whether we're talking about your smartphone, tablet, laptop, desktop machine, you can use ProXPN. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Get started there. You can start with their free account and just try it out. Now, the free account is heavily bandwidth limited. You will need to upgrade to their premium package to get unlimited bandwidth and multiple servers around the world to which you can connect. There's also some other perks with the premium package, like the fact that you can do private torrenting with it. Go drop by ProXPN.com slash FTL. Learn more about the service. It's awesome, and you can get it for as low as 5 bucks a month with our discount code FTL20. That's FTL in the number 20 to save 20% for the lifetime of the account on ProXPN.com slash FTL. Code FTL20. You get a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits. Again, ProXPN.com slash FTL. Code FTL20. Whatever's on your mind goes here on Free Talk Live. Tony is on the air on f- calling from Alabama. Hey, Tony. Hi. Hey, Tony, you're on the air. All right. I listen to radio a great deal because I have uh, problems that, that cause this. That. You know, I, uh, also, I have never heard anyone discuss frozen foods. Frozen and foods. I'm prone Let's hear it. To, I'm prone to... That's what I eat because I can't cook, do my cooking now. Okay. Mm. And are you uh, are you happy with the frozen foods with the uh, the selection? Oh, the taste? I'm extremely unhappy. Mm. Have you eaten frozen food lately? Yes, yes, I have. Yeah, he <laughs> I'm eats a, frozen right. food. Basically, a bachelor, so uh, <laughs> I, I can oh, cook, but I don't bother. Well, I wish I could, but there's so much salt, sugar. Mm, I have high blood pressure, so they preserve everything and to last for I don't know how many years, but I cannot eat it. So oftentimes you can go to the – at the grocery store, they'll have a separate section that's kind of the health food freezer section. Oh, really? Where it's not preserved? Well, you'll you'll find different sorts of preservatives that Mm -hmm. won't have um, the same stuff in it. So I think that, you know, take a a look in that section. You might find something that uh, doesn't have all the stuff that bothers you. Well, I've tried all those. All right. And uh, oh, they are dated for a certain date, so you know there's going to be a lot of salt in it. Well, Tony, how about this? I mean, just a co- totally different idea for you. And I don't know, um, I don't know how you know much money you have to spend. You don't generally have to spend too much money to hire a personal chef. Uh, what you can do is there's different folks out there who will come to your home. They'll buy fresh ingredients. And uh, they will cook in your kitchen for you. They will cook what you want. Uh, We used to actually have a a personal chef on Free Talk Live years ago, back when we were a local show in Sarasota, Florida. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah, he'd come into the show and he'd bring some sort of, you know, delicious concoction. And he would, uh, you know, talk about his services, which basically he shows up at your house and gives you a survey. And you answer all these survey questions about your preferences as far as what you like to eat and what you don't. And then he comes up with a menu. Of, uh, of options and the way he does it is it's really smart the reason why it does, doesn't cost a lot I mean if you had a guy living at your house all the time and cooking for you all day that would be you know expensive, expensive. but yeah. what he does is he'll come in on one day and he'll cook a bunch of meals all in one you know shot that and then he'll, great. then he'll take you know Tupperware or whatever, and he'll put them in uh, in the Tupperware and put them in your freezer. So essentially, what he'll do is make frozen food fresh in your right. kitchen. So then you've got your own food. You just go to the freezer, you pull out whichever meal you want, you pop it in the freezer. I mean, you pop it in the microwave, and I think that might be an option for you. It's not that expensive. And, uh, and he'll even do the shopping, you, you know, usually. So if you call oh, around, look for some personal chefs there in the Madison okay. area and, and, and call around and, uh, and see what kind of deals you can get. I thank you for the call tonight, Tony. I really appreciate hearing from uh, you. You're... You know, you really can bring up uh, whatever you want here on Free Talk Live. <laughs> and that's proof. Pizza Guy is on the line. He's in North, uh, North Dakota. Pizza Guy. Hey, I wanted to uh, kind of call and give another revelation I had. 
Uh, my wife's car recently stopped being able to reverse. So what was that? She's what? Uh, you got a little uh, warbly there. Say again. Oh, sorry. My wife's car has recently stopped being able to reverse. That's bad. So I've been in the market. Yeah, I've been looking for cars, and um, you know, I've been looking into it, and I've learned quite a few things. Well, in, in, uh, have you learned that in life you should always be heading forward? You, you don't need to be going backward. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, for now what we do when we park is we always try to make sure we're uphill so that when she backs out, she can just kind of roll wow. down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, but, so anyway, you know, I, back when I was younger, you used to be able to get a car for $500. I don't know what happened to that. The yeah, that, that doesn't happen anymore. I think it's 5000 now. <laughs> Bottom line is, is, well, I'm up here in North Dakota, things a little easier, and it's three thousand. It's uh, and it's ridiculous, and I and I wonder to myself why. And uh, you know, I've been doing a lot of thinking about it, and really, the car market resembles so closely the house market from like fifteen years ago or ten years ago. And so that was just kind of the I kind of wanted to give more of a public service announcement to be like, hey, anybody thinking about spending money on a car? I don't want to wait because I guarantee you. So mark my words. I'm saying it on, on Free Talk Live Saturday, May 31st at 6:54 p.m. Central. The car market is a bubble that's going to burst. There's going to be a whole bunch of car derivatives, and the whole thing is going to collapse when people can't make their car payments and they can't sell their car for more than the car is worth. Well, don't it's they? Just like the house. Didn't they pull a bunch of uh, cars re- recently out of the used car market? The cash for clunkers thing. They took them and they just. Exactly mushed them and so the uh i mean the, those cars aren't there they crushed them into uh into dust that's not like the housing market where they were where they were still in existence i mean there's a real supply and demand issue going on in used cars and so and so here's the here's the economic components that are at work here i, I think it was a pretty clever epiphany of me to kind of see it um so the, you the and your clever epiphanies a, i know right the car industry is very uh, heavily regulated and are uh, unionized, I'm sorry. And so they won't allow their prices to drop. But uh, what has happened is that the, the Federal Reserve is pumping all kinds of money into the system. And so rather than the price of the cars dropping, which is what you would expect to happen with this uh, increase in supply um, and demand for new cars, because the cash for clunkers thing took that demand, the demand for new cars and increased it. Because you need a car, but you can't find an old car. So that increased the demand for new cars. So you think prices will go down, but they're higher than they've ever been. And so hmm. what happens, because of the unions, what happens when the prices of the cars can't go down, the price of the money with which you purchase the car has dropped. And that's why you can go get a car loan for nothing. And prices are higher than they've ever been because the demand is, is really high for those new cars. And when demand goes up, prices go up. Uh, but people aren't buying them because they, they can't afford them. They're making more than because they're overestimating because all those loanable funds are are uh, mistaken for actual safe available capital. you know. And, and what's going to happen is that in like two years, cars will be nothing. It, if you have a car, I very strongly used to je- – if you have any – I mean, it's, it is a basic uh, finance. If you have any loan over 2%, which you probably do, uh, go take a loan out on your car. Right, if your car is paid off, you'll get a better price than the car is even worth, and then put that money against whatever loan is over four percent. But for the love of God, don't go get a car loan for eighteen thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars out there for new cars. Don't go do it. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Do you think the cost of a new car is going to come down, or the used car cost is going to come down? All of them. It's all. It's it's uh. You know, in in economics, you talk about uh, substitutes. You know, hmm. so like uh, if the price of Mountain Dew goes up, people more people start drinking Mellow Yellow. I tend right? to think so I tend to think getting a, a loan for a, a new car at, at all is crazy. I mean, it just seems well, like a, a yeah. throwing money down the hole. What he's is foreclosures on cars, uh, basically. Uh, what do they call it? Repossessions on cars mm-hmm. um, that people just can't make the loans, and so therefore the the used car market will have an influx. Thanks, Pizza Guy, for the call. Cool. Appreciate the predictions. Uh, of course, in a lot of cases. You know, if you need a car, you need a car, right? Yeah, a lot of uh, times. You know, I wouldn't recommend buying it new. sometimes you can hold on to it. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend buying it new any old, any old way. 855 450 free. Unless you just have, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars you can throw around. Why would you want to buy a new car? Hour number two is coming up. Take control here. 
Today, people go to college, do coursework, repeat what professors tell them, get degrees, and are issued official transcripts from state-approved institutions. In the future, people will learn online and obtain pseudonymous academic credentials associated with their Bitcoin address. That future is now. At mathgate.info, you can learn basic reasoning skills. Instead of a transcript, you can earn cryptographic proof that the owner of your Bitcoin address learned these skills. For more information, come to mathgate.info. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent fiends archives do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent fiends archives do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent fiends archives imagine for a moment a radio program the most personal of mediums that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the u.s and around the world through the internet with podcasts and live streams imagine the advertising is affordable from 600 to six thousand dollars a month free talk live is that program we will work with you to get clicks calls views or sales email me at mark at freetalklive.com so you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at LibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, May 30th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,253. Silver opened at $19. And Bitcoin is trading at $611.98. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from affordable sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code LIBERTY and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs. Online at affordablesound.com or call them up 512-459-5253. Support also comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours, voiceandexit.com. In the news, an investigation by Forensics Architecture, a research project based at London's Goldsmiths University and New York-based C2 Research, revealed that most drone attacks carried out by the CIA in Pakistan target private homes. The drone strikes usually occur in the middle of the night when families are home and asleep. The research showed 61% of drone strikes in Pakistan target domestic buildings, and more than 132 houses have been destroyed in at least 380 strikes. Out of the 1,500 killed, more than 200 were innocent civilians. A report by The Guardian reveals the NSA struggled to meet the demands of an unprecedented number of FOIA requests following documents released by Edward Snowden. Top officials reportedly discussed ways to fend off journalists, advocacy groups, and individuals who bombarded the agency with over 5,000 Freedom of Information Act requests between June 5th through June 12th of last year. The agency only received 800 such requests during the same period the previous year. And the 62nd Bilderberg meeting is set to take place from May 29th through June 1st in Copenhagen, Denmark. Bilderberg's press release detailed this year's official talking points, which include privacy, intelligence sharing, China's political and economic outlook, and other current events. In attendance will be 140 participants from 22 countries who maintain high-level positions in finance, academia, and media, along with a diverse group of politicians and experts from various industries. The group has fallen under scrutiny, though, due to the secrecy that surrounds the annual closed-door meeting. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online, rrbi.co 
or by phone 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, May 30th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Another milestone for the era of cryptocurrency as Dish decides to accept Bitcoin for payment. In a press release issued by the pay TV provider Thursday, Dish Executive Vice President and CFO Bernie Hand says the decision was made as a way to deliver choice and convenience to the company's customers. According to Dish, the move makes them the largest company to accept Bitcoin payments. Coinbase was selected as the payment processor for the Bitcoin transactions, with customers choosing the cryptocurrency for online payments able to use the Bitcoin wallet of their choice. On Wednesday, activists and Ecuadorian indigenous community members held a protest outside the Permian Basin Petroleum Museum in Midland, Texas, demanding that oil giant Chevron take responsibility for damage done to the Ecuadorian Amazon rainforest. Activists condemn Chevron for refusing to pay for pollution left behind by Texaco, whom Chevron bought in 2001. Texaco was found guilty and fined nearly $19 billion by an Ecuadorian court. However, Chevron has refused to pay and countersued the Ecuadorian communities, accusing them of defrauding the court. Hundreds of undocumented immigrants from Central America were flown from South Texas to Arizona and released at bus stations in Tucson and Phoenix this week. A spokesman for the Border Patrol in Tucson confirmed the 400 migrants were apprehended in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas and flown to Arizona due to the lack of manpower needed to handle such a surge of illegal immigrants in South Texas. The move has drawn criticism from both sides of the immigration issue, with some saying the release encourages more migrants to cross over the border illegally. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, home of one of the first Bitcoin ATMs in the country where you can buy and sell Bitcoin. Visit the ATM at 321 West Ben White Boulevard, number 203. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Online at CaboBob's.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, May 30th, 2014. Welcome back to the War for the White House Bunker. A troubling new report from the Shuttleworth Institute shows that due to Facebook, every potential candidate for the 2040 presidential race, no matter how smart or accomplished, is now completely unelectable. I'm standing in the 2012 Democrat grid with Jason Copeland. Jason, walk us through this. Yeah, we're looking at really a political crisis. The Democrats are currently searching uh, basements and uh, creepy backyard sheds huh. in search of somebody who was kidnapped at a young enough age that they have no online presence. That is a very interesting Could tactic. Be an and the GOP has been looking at this young man. This is a 20-year-old Jeevus Jones. He's currently living in Appalachia with his uh, fundamentalist Christian grandmother and no electricity. So, so Jeevus has no Facebook page. Jeevus does not. In fact, he's completely illiterate. And uh, the Republican Party has begun grooming him for uh, a possible candidacy in 2036. All right. Well, at least there's someone. Thank you, Jason Copeland. Thanks, Andrea. Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. You can take control of the airwaves here toll free at 855-453. That is the number brought to you by Pro XPN. It's 855-450-3733. Still to come here tonight, Mark will be telling us about a uh, dad who's in trouble for making his child walk home from school and more, including a baby versus a SWAT team. We'll see how that one turned out. 855-450-FREE. Also, we've got Skype. Skype on into the show. Username there, lrn.fm. Let's jump into your calls and thoughts. We've got Charles in West Virginia. Charles, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hi, guys. Hey, Charles. Go ahead with your thoughts. Uh, this thing you had on our while ago, the gentleman talking about, the uh, picture man talking about buying used cars. Well, the used cars are gone. They were crushed and ground into fine metal and shipped out to... Uh, the coast uh, in California to be shipped over to China, where they can take the coal that they buy from the, what's being mined, what little bit's being mined in West Virginia to melt that steel down and sell it back to us. Hmm. The president's the president's will on coal just picked up again. He just gave the EPA another free reign to shut down coal. Uh, you cannot power power plants with water, wind, and gas and produce the electricity you get from coal, even up in your area. 
the power that's generated here goes up into your area, all lot, the way up through there. A lot of power comes from uh, coal here. We also have a, uh, a hydropower plant that's uh, coming likely coming online sometime in the next year. But, uh, yeah, there's there's plenty of power that comes from coal here. Well, there's a, the, the same coal that we mine here is metallurgical coal. It's the best coal in the world. Not because it's my coal, our coal here. It is the best coal in the world. It is 3% ash. You can put 100 pounds of it in a furnace or in your stove or whatever and take out 3 pounds. Hmm. It's the only coal in the world hot enough to really melt steel and purify iron ore. The Chinese don't care what they burn. They burn the ash out of it in their furnaces. To power their steam plants. Yeah, they've to had make- uh, they've had a few days uh, recently where they've just sort of had uh, you know shut down some plants so that it wouldn't be quite as, uh, as as smoggy in some of their major cities. But they have a huge smog problem there. Well, in this country, just on the east coast, not through central West Virginia, and up on the river here, they shut down altogether uh, unless they get a new count in the next two four hundred and twelve power plants. That's a lot of power. Yes. <laughs> Charles, uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts tonight. Do appreciate hearing from you. Let's go to Zenoff in New York. Zenoff, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, hi, guys. Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Hi, how are you, gentlemen? Good. Um, uh, just really quick, uh, I want to talk about, um, I want to give some advice to the woman who called from Wisconsin, the elderly woman looking for frozen foods that are not such high in uh, sodium and stuff. Yeah, sure. Buying bagged vegetables at the frozen food section of the grocery store is a real good option, but it's only vegetables. And yes, they have a little sodium, very little sugar, and I use them all the time. Okay, also, yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. I wasn't really thinking about, um, uh, you know, when she said frozen foods, those are what I was thinking about. It was bags of peas and thing, that sort of thing. But uh, I think she was right. talking about like she was right. about frozen Watchers dinners, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, the pre-cooked dinners that come, like, with uh, pasta and meat and all this stuff, yes, they're loaded, like, 900 milligrams of sodium. I've eaten them. I have them. But the point is, is she can do very well by just shopping through the vegetable section and picking them out. And then for um, protein and stuff, local Chinese restaurants actually sell health food diets, too, where they'll give you, like, just uh, boiled chicken. No... No sodium, no nothing. Hmm. Uh, just an option. Okay, I called about police accountability. Yeah, oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I I wrote this down too because I realized that you know it, it would help to write it down so I could just kind of read this off. I have this idea the two nights ago, and it's not perfect, and uh, it's just an idea how to operate within the system we have now to possibly hold police accountable for their actions. I wrote down participatory democracy in action, civic duty, using the Internet and the democratic process to hold police accountable for their actions. Give me an example of what you mean by that. Okay. To eventually end up with a police force of only intelligent and kind peace officers. Okay, so how we do this? Make all police officers wear audio-video cameras that record all their actions while on duty, except for bathroom breaks. B. If an incident arises such as quote, cop shoots a dog, which calls into question an officer's judgment, and many incidents surely will, post the footage to the Internet and allow all denizens of the web to decide through a majority vote whether or not further investigation is needed. Now, hold now, on. We have, Would that we be all, all denizens of the web, meaning anyone anywhere in the world, or only the people who are yeah. in the political designation that is uh, under no. that particular everybody, government? Everybody and anybody in the world. Okay. Everybody. Um, if it is decided that's not going to fly, inve- but it's an interesting idea, right? Right. If that if it is decided that further investigation is needed, then the officer is a put on a probationary period for a period of two weeks thereafter. I'm just grasping. Uh, B. A group of ten or so citizens, similar to a jury pool, is allowed direct access to that officer's webcam live, twenty four seven. Only while the officer is on duty, of course, except for restroom breaks, but even lunch breaks, the video audio is always rolling. C, the officer's salary and all perks, compensation from then on are held in escrow. None of this is paid vacation, administrative leave BS. D, assuming compensation totals $50 an hour roughly, 
perks, bonuses, pensions, health benefits, overtime. Ten people would earn $5 an hour to watch, examine every single movement, judgment, account that said officer has with anyone, even himself, whilst on duty. This tally excludes any possible overtime if one said officer works overtime. You're saying, just to clarify, you're saying that an officer would be able to be watched after there was some sort of an issue or complaint, and the people who are watching that officer would be paid to watch the officer? Exactly. That's and, how and we so pay therefore, them. The, that, a, that an officer under investigation, he would be receiving his paycheck, and then on top of that, the other no. people would have to? No, his paycheck would be diverted to the people watching him. Why would he go to work? Exactly. See okay. my point? So every time a uh, police this officer has a good, kind, good people, good people will work for free. Well, that's really the basis of my point. There's a an article. I think it's out from yesterday. K a k e dot com. I assume that's a television station in Wichita, where apparently a um, police union has won a, some kind of case against uh, the police department. And it says that, uh, in fact, any they're really officer, in this together, huh? Yeah, any any officer that has a grievance against ca- wearing a camera no longer has to. Wow. All right. Well, there goes that idea. But you know, it's interesting, uh, Zinoff. <laughs> the course. problem is, is that uh, government doesn't come from the people. We're told that, but it's it, it it's just not true. Government comes down from the rulers. You know, you've got some interesting ideas. I don't know how uh, well they're going to fly in New York. I mean, what do you think the odds are that uh, anything like that's ever going to be implemented in the the Empire State? It's uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's but, an idea. Yeah, well, you know we need I mean? to have people with ideas. We need to have dreamers, exactly. people with vision, uh, because the more people that put their ideas out there, the more likely that one of those ideas could possibly come to fruition. But we've got to have the, you know, we've got to have the activists on the ground to be able to possibly implement something like this, because there just aren't it. enough well, people. In, gra- go ahead. I'm sorry. What's What's great about New Hampshire that I don't, I, you guys promote a little bit, but not enough, in my opinion, is how. You have so many legislatures per population. Oh, yeah. And how little they get paid per year. $100, 100 a year, is it? Yeah, it's 100 true. bucks a year. Right. And you only have 1.4 million people. Correct. Yep. I mean, so, right. But it, 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 the, the, uh, the ratio of representatives to the population is so important into getting real liberty. Right. It's the, third, it's the third so, largest legislative body in the English speaking world. And like the, um, you know, the 40 first most populous state. So it's a right. one of the smallest states, the least populated states with the, one of the largest legislative bodies. Yeah, each representative represents, with quotes around it, uh, 30, 35. about 3,500 people here in New Hampshire. Thanks, Zinoff. Appreciate your call. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. 855-450-3733. You want to see change? you got to look to New Hampshire as uh, if you love liberty. Look at the Free State Project. We'll tell you a little, bo- a little bit more about that coming up here in a moment. And uh, Dad's in pretty big trouble for sending his kid home from school. It's Free Talk Live. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. What if humans found a habitable planet, set up housekeeping, and then got left alone by Earth and its big government? Well, that happened in Freehold, Michael Z. Williamson's seminal work. Now available for the first time in a signed, limited hardback edition. Other books in this series are also available in paperback. I cannot recommend a modern fiction work more highly than Freehold. Earth might have left Freehold alone, but it doesn't stay that way. It's war. Get your copy right now at all major booksellers and shop.freetalklive.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? 
These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. A new medical study on the effects of marijuana use confirms that everyone knows you're high and that you'll never stop feeling like this. Everyone can smell the marijuana on your breath and on your clothes. Everyone is laughing at you. Additionally, the in-depth report reveals that despite trying to act cool, you're definitely laughing too much and everyone is messing with you. Your parents know you're high, your friends know you're high, strangers on the street know you're high. If you're young and you smoke marijuana, you will probably never be able to find a job. And if you're an adult, you will most likely be fired. If you hear a noise, that's probably the police, and you're probably going to jail. While previous studies suggested that it's all good and that we're all made of the same stuff that makes stars, new research indicates that your brain got broken and you shouldn't have done this. Doctors say the study raises important questions such as, what if that wasn't just marijuana and how are you going to get home? This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and it's the live Saturday edition. You can bring up anything that you want right here toll-free. 855-450-FREE is the number. That number brought to you by ProXPN. It's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. And enjoy all the features we share with you on the website. You get to control the content by submitting content right there to the front page. You can submit whatever news you want. Maybe it's a YouTube video. Maybe it's not even news. Maybe it's just something fun. You can do that, too. Just submit it there, and our listeners can vote just like you can vote on whatever you want on the front page. Vote it up if you like. Vote it down if you don't. You know, something that you should vote up if it were there. It's not right now, but the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Give that your thumbs up if you get the chance because it's a lot of fun to come to New Hampshire and spend a week or just a weekend. Some people can only make it up for the weekend, and that's fine, too. Whatever amount of time you can devote to attending the Porcupine Freedom Festival, you will not be disappointed. Uh, that is, if you enjoy the idea of coming to a campground in the beautiful White Mountains of New, uh, northern New Hampshire with approximately 1,500 other people. That was about the number of attendees last year and the year before that. Could be more than that this year, but thousands of people, perhaps, uh, in attendance, hundreds, certainly, who love freedom. People who are coming together to the same geographic area, many of whom have already made the move as part of the Free State Project, which is an idea of gathering people who love liberty all into the same place and getting active to achieve liberty in our lifetime. Many of those who have already moved will be in attendance, but the, the vast majority of people attending any given Porcupine Freedom Festival are brand new. They're people who've never been to New Hampshire before, and they've never been to the Porcupine Freedom Festival before, and it is an absolute blast to meet such great folks and, of course, do all the various camping 
activities that are available and it's not just all camping stuff there's also you know seminars and discussions there's a diy theme a do-it-yourself theme so you'll be able to learn a lot of stuff uh, this year there's the agro valley where people are selling various different wares and uh, foods some of them many of them taking bitcoin as payment some taking gold or silver uh, as payment and of course uh, cash is usually available there as well to be taken there's just so much to talk about when it comes to the porcupine freedom festival we can't tell you it all in advance I suppose if you really want a taste of what it's like, but if you don't want to wait, you can go to our archives at freetalklive.com and download last year's episodes because we're there broadcasting live <laughs> every single year. And, of course, the best way to get a flavor for the Porcupine Freedom Festival is to listen to Free Talk Live if you can't make it in person. We will be there again this year broadcasting live, as will a number of the shows from LRN.FM. The tickets, I believe, are available through the end of the evening. Uh, this is the end, like at the end of online ticketing for the Porcupine Freedom Festival. If you want to get them, go get them now. Porkfest.com. You get them for 75 bucks, I believe is the current current rate. At least the last time I looked. Don't quote me on that. I heard that it was going to go up from 75 to to $100 for the entire week. So if you wait, if you don't go tonight to Porkfest.com and get your tickets, if you wait until the event, which is June 22nd through the 29th, you're going to pay a little bit more. And so why wait? Go ahead and get your tickets now, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. We'll look forward to seeing you there in just three weeks at this point, three weeks away. Wow. It's going to be here before you know it. All right, so, uh, Mark, let's talk uh, about school. In this case, not so much school, but parenting, surrounding school. A uh, young man was sent home from school by his father, was told to, told to walk home. I don't have any of the info here. Mark, what's going on? Yeah, this is from the Huffington Post um, and out of Hawaii, actually, uh, I'm not going to, you know, just take any stabs at these names. I'll do my very best when the time comes. A judge sentenced a Hawaiian man to one year of probation. Sentenced? Hmm. One year of probation and a $200 fine, because that'll fix the problem, um, for making his son walk a mile home from school as a form of discipline. So the judge is Kathleen wow. uh, Watanabe. Uh, called the punishment old school and no longer appropriate. The Garden Island newspaper reported on Thursday, Robert Damon of Kiluahu said he picked up uh, his son from school and asked about a matter that had been brought to his attention. So apparently some sort of disciplinary matter. When the son didn't respond, Damon made him walk home to think about his actions. So he went to pick him up, asked a question, didn't get the response he wanted, Son, you're walking home today. Didn't get any response, yeah. um, and it was about some kind of disciplinary matter or whatever. Remember when um, you know people would talk to parents about what their kids did so that the parents would, you know, meet out whatever discipline that they would meet out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, apparently we don't do that anymore. Um, the age of the boy is unclear, so we know he's at school, and that says to me that he's kindergarten age or higher. Okay, and. Uh, I wouldn't send a kindergartner home. I wouldn't have a kindergartner walk a mile home. Hmm. But um, anyway, it's it's difficult to know. It's very difficult to know. Damon's attorney declined to comment, while a prosecutor did immediately respond to a request seeking comment from the Associated. Didn't uh, immediately respond from request seeking comment from the Associated Press. Damon was also ordered to attend a parenting class after being convicted of endangering the welfare of a minor, a misdemeanor. Damon pleaded no contest, said that he would handle the situation differently now after the case went through two courts. Damon uh, told Watanabe in court on Wednesday that he didn't think the punishment was morally or criminally wrong. Um, he said that he was a uh, it was a form of punishment when he was growing up. And Watanabe said, "Times are different today, <laughs> given child predators and traffic." So, wow, okay. traffic is different now than when this guy. Now, I'm a dad. I'm 43, and I'm probably a bit of an older dad at this point. So. What I'm remembering is yeah, traffic. My parents from, were 30 when they had me. Yeah. So I remember traffic like uh, my mom's uh, 1971 Cutlass with a cabrio top, uh, you know, rear wheel drive, no anti lock brakes, these things. Remember when cars, you'd slam on the brakes and they go, hmm. you know, I mean, that happened all the time. That was the sque- squealing of tires. That doesn't happen anymore because of, you know, the traction control and all these things. I think cars are safer than they used to be, and I don't know if there's that many more cars on the road. And as far as child predators go, we have fewer child predators now than we used to. Is that true? 
That, those Statistics? are the numbers I've looked. Uh, crimes, crimes decreasing, and I have seen in the past, hmm. uh, you know, statistics on child predators from, uh, you know, from people outside the family. It's difficult well, right. to get numbers of what was going on in the past inside families. Yeah, I mean, the, you're far more likely if your child is going to be molested, they're far more likely to be molested inside a family rather than just, you know, some stranger pulling over on the side of the road as they're walking home from school. And I mean, how many students walk home from school on a regular basis? It's it's a fair amount of them. There's certain rules, like in in a lot of jurisdictions, if you live within a certain radius of a school, they're not going to send a bus for you. They're yep. just not going to do it. And I don't know if that radius has gotten smaller over time. I mean, I I I thought it used to be two miles or something like that. Where you know, when I was growing up, for whatever reason, that number sticks in my head. This was only a mile. That's one mile. At the slowest walk, fifteen minutes. <laughs> right. A kid might make it in twenty. Um, and I don't. Know I remember how- walking a mile in 15 because I wouldn't run them. I was, uh, you know, not wanting to run in gym class, and it was about 15 minutes to walk. Yeah, but you don't know how how old the kid is in this circumstance. Okay. It's just difficult to know. Yeah. But I, you know, it's impossible to know. The story doesn't say. I don't know. I mean, it seems to me that this is, uh, you know, once again the court system is getting between parents and children. Mm. It makes it very difficult to know how to parent effectively. How are you going to parent effectively if you're constantly second guessing? Now, courts have said no spanking. I'm not a supporter of spanking, but how do parents know how to parent if you can't spank, you can't make your kid walk home from school? What exactly are you supposed to do? All right, so obviously we want to hear from you out there on this. If you are a parent, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. What do you think about this method of discipline? Making the son walk home from school. Should this be criminally punishable? Even if you disagree with it. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. 855-450-3733. Here, it's Free Talk Live. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though, it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Stouffer's, helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options, even on the busiest of nights. Find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at letsfixdinner.com. To get kids involved in dinnertime conversation, ask specific questions, not broad ones. Instead of what happened today at school, try what was the best thing that happened today. The more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. 
But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. Love as your guide. And liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We will take your calls about whatever you want. So you can just dial on in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. You like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live? There are ways to support the show. One of them is by shopping with us at Amazon. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and you can learn more about connecting Amazon there. Just connect to your favorite Amazon and get your shopping taken care of. Now, unfortunately, Amazon does not yet take Bitcoins directly. However, there are ways to spend Bitcoins at sites like Amazon or Target or uh, you know Home Depot and uh, and Gift.com is a is a way to do that. You know I've actually I've used Gift a few times. I think and it's pretty And Oh, I've never tried that one. Yep. Okay, cool. So what you do is you buy gift cards with Bitcoin and then you use the gift card to uh, use the gift card at your favorite location whether it's, you know, physically in real life or if it's uh, online. And it's really handy because Gift actually gives you a discount. Basically, they give you 3% back in the form of these points that you can then use later to buy another gift card. So you can actually pay for things in Bitcoin and you can save. So to me, that's what Bitcoin really needs. Is uh, And I think Bitcoin's an amazing technology. It's this decentralized currency, an internet-based currency that is controlled by people, by the people. You can be part of the Bitcoin network. It's an amazing thing. And the prices of Bitcoin, by the way, have been going up over the last couple of weeks. They're now over $600 per Bitcoin. So, you know, it's a neat thing. I'm a huge fan of Bitcoin. I actually just installed, uh, I got a new phone. I just reinstalled the blockchain app on it uh, today. Very, very handy stuff. But you've got to have Bitcoin in order to be able to spend Bitcoin. And we have the solution for you. Cash into coins. Dot com. That's cashintocoins.com. You can use money order, check, or wire transfer. The instructions are clear, easy, it's safe, fast, legal, and inexpensive, and customer service is their top priority. Get your Bitcoin wallet set up first, then go to cashintocoins.com and get some Bitcoins. It's so simple. In fact, they really want you to have Bitcoins so much that they have decided to not charge a fee for anybody ordering less than $40 worth of Bitcoins. You do more than $40 worth, it's a very, very reasonable fee. So check it out, cashintocoins.com. That's cashintocoins.com. Lenny is in Battle Creek listening to WBCK on the FM band. Hey, Lenny. Hey, good evening. Welcome, sir. So uh, I wanted to talk to you. Yeah, well, thanks. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about the, uh, you know, the school bus thing. And kind of relate that that just really resonated with me because I had some experiences as a child growing up that are really really similar to that. And I thought I'd relate it to you if you had a minute. Yeah, please. Okay, so first off, fifth you know kindergarten through fifth grade, I wanted to ride the bus, but it was seven eighths of a mile according to the school, so I had to walk. Uh-huh. And you know, so I right so. No big deal. Kindergarten. Okay, because Mark was saying, hold up, before you go on, because Mark was saying earlier, I don't know if I'd let my son walk home from school if he was in kindergarten. My son is kindergarten age, and I would not let him walk home but from school by you're himself. you're saying, Lenny, that you had to, to walk to school at, eight, in, at kindergarten at, age. Yeah. Did you have a parent did. with I mean, you at all times? 
Heck no. No, it was just us kids. I mean, no. And it was normal. Now, before I go on, I want to say, you know, first off, I'll just say times have changed. And it, would, and it is strange to see kids walking alone now. And and, but I, and I also think, I, that, yeah, it is. I mean, it is. I really think, uh, you but know. have times really right, changed? I mean, Mark was saying that uh, apparently the statistics show there are even fewer child molestations or kidnappings or whatever, like crimes down. I'm, I'm not saying that they should be different. You know, I think there's a lot of paranoia and, and all that. I think the crimes were happening before and we just weren't aware and all that. So, but people's idea of what mm-hmm. is right for a child, that's what I mean by what times have changed. So, in seventh, here's, let me explain this. You know, it relates this. In seventh grade, now I'm in junior high and it's fully three miles plus to junior high. I did a bad thing and got kicked off the bus for a whole week. I didn't get suspended from school, but I, I threw an egg at a bus because the mother kids were driving by at 7.30 in the morning, like three days in a row, throwing water balloons that I didn't even know at us at our bus stop. So I threw an egg at their bus hmm. and, you know, hit it, and so it was a bad thing. This is the naughtiest thing I ever did in, in junior <laughs> high. So anyway, my what my parents did was they said, okay, you're kicked off the bus for five days. You are going to walk. So I had to walk to and from school. And three miles is a long way. Yeah. Now I, you know, I've backpacked and hitchhiked in my later life and everything, and three miles is nothing. But back then, boy, that was a long haul. Yeah, when somebody tells and, you you've uh, got to walk three miles and you didn't want to walk three miles, it's a long way. It is. So anyway, I learned my lesson. But, uh, uh, again, I think to get serious, and that all really happened to me. But The lesson was you should have thrown a water balloon at the bus, not an egg. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and the the kids were in the back of the bus, and my aim wasn't so good. It's like a thoroughfare. They're going by at like 35 or 40 miles an hour, and I hit Mm -hmm. the wind. And so anyway, but that was like 40 years ago. So. So, but what do you think, I mean, about the idea of uh, being a parent today and uh, you know, this dad got in trouble for having his son walk home from school? We don't know how old the child was. Well, we do know that the uh, the, the municipality got a $200 fine out of the dad as though that yeah, makes up for the help. son who was in some way harmed, I guess. Do you think the dad did any wrong in this case? No, I do not. I mean... If, if, I mean, certainly not to where he should get punishment. Yeah, now he's got probation. Player. Now, I'm now men with guns can show up at his house and search his house any old time of the day or night. Uh, and I mean, probation is not a very cool thing to, uh, to be a part of. So, this is, this is a pretty no, serious punishment. That has what has changed. It is serious and wrong. You know, the, the, the fact that, you know, I don't know the circumstances of his roadway and all that for his kid to walk, but he probably does, and it probably seemed like the right thing to do, you know, to him. And, I, and, and that's, you know, I support that. Now, you know, but maybe it isn't safe. I don't know. You know, maybe it's a winding. I don't, I, I've never been to Hawaii, but I can imagine there's all kinds of twist and wind and beautiful roads, you know, and, and with not a lot of shoulder, whatever. I don't know, though. But it, to, in any case, to punish him in that way is definitely over the top. That Lenny, thanks wrong. for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you at 855-450 free. I wonder if anyone out there thinks that it isn't over the top, that thinks that this was an entirely appropriate punishment, a year's probation, a $200 fine for a man who told his son, you got to walk home today. You have disappointed me, son, whatever the issue was. There was some sort of question he asked. He didn't get, the, get, didn't get an answer to, and uh, he was upset, and he decided to uh, punish his son. He didn't hit his son. He didn't beat, you know, there wasn't physical violence involved here. He just made him do something he didn't want to do. He was going to get a ride home, and then he didn't get a ride home. And do you think that punishing this man uh, was appropriate. I, I mean, who out there would think this? I, I This is, it's sweeping Facebook right now. Um, really? And, you know, the social networking sites. So I, I get the impression, oftentimes when this happens, the offending party, in this case the uh, the municipality, the judge, will back off. Now, this guy's already been sentenced. It's been sentenced. sentenced. Yeah, it's over, dude. I don't see how there's going to be a backing mm-hmm. off here. I, I You know, the judge is going to be... Well, whatever. Yeah, the so, judge isn't going to rescind his verdict. And this guy pled no contest to this. It's over. 
Yeah. Um, this story didn't didn't get the legs before the sentencing. So what was the charge? I don't recall hearing that Ch- in the story. Child endangerment. Really. Yeah. So hmm. the idea is is that oh you can't let a child walk home from school they'll be too close to the road and what about the sexual predators? Um, that's the that's the concept there. Uh, your thoughts are welcome here, especially if you whether you're a parent or not. I don't care. I just want to find somebody who thinks that this punishment is appropriate, that thinks that this man should be in trouble. Is there anybody that thinks that he should have been punished more severely? Let's take let's take him and put him in a jail cell. So uh, that way, you know, that'll really teach him a lesson, right? And then, of course, take the son and put him in a foster home where he might be abused, uh, possibly. So. Well, that's obviously not what they want to do. But what happens if the probation goes poorly? Well, yeah, well, it's not hard to violate a probation at all. The toll-free number. And I love the fact that this, the city or the county gets $200 out of this guy. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. That's 855-450-3733. Should there have been a punishment for this? And if so, what is an appropriate one? This is Free Talk Live. What if you could combine the two most powerful diet ingredients into one incredible weight loss super pill? We've done just that. For the first time ever, the miracle fat burner in a bottle, Raspberry Ketone, has been combined with pure Garcinia Cambogia, described as the holy grail of weight loss, to bring you the world's most powerful diet pill. Get your phone ready, because we're releasing free bottles to the first 100 callers. But wait, we haven't just combined the two most powerful weight loss ingredients. We've combined the six most powerful ingredients. Green coffee bean, African mango, moringa, and glucomonin. All the hottest clinically proven weight loss ingredients combined into one fat-shedding super pill. We call it the Skinny Six Super Supplement, and it's available for the very first time. Be one of the first 100 callers, and we'll rush you a free bottle. Call 1-800-514-2945. Find out how to get your free bottle. 1-800-514-2945. 1-800-514-2945. Men who want intimacy and pleasure back in their love life don't ask if, they ask when. So men, spark up your love life, get pleasure and intimacy back, and please your special lady with Epic Nights. Epic Nights is a safe, revolutionary herbal sexual formula for men that combines ancient herbal ingredients and modern science to significantly support stamina, performance, and pleasure. Men, Epic Nights is a proven 100% natural product that works first time, every time, even after consuming alcohol. And you won't hear any of those cliche disclaimers men because epic nights will not give you unwanted side effects but epic nights will allow you to give your partner what they deserve epic nights is guaranteed as one of the most effective male enhancers on the web or will refund your purchase 100 buy epic nights at buyepicnights.com spelled b-u-y-e-p-i-c-n-i-g-h-t-s.com or call 1-877-330-1120 877-330-1120 epic nights one pill one epic night Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the Realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres 
a lakeside cabin. Any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too. Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. He sent his son home from school. He was going to pick him up, but uh, his son wasn't doing what he wanted him to. He didn't answer the question he asked. Dad, send him, send him home. Send him walking home. Um, uh, what was it, a mile? That's a all. Mile. Just a mile. Home to school. Or home from school, rather. And now, uh, Dad's been sentenced to probation for an entire year. He has been fined $200 and has been now, that's convicted. That's not court costs, from what I understand. This is a fine. fine. He has been convicted of endangerment of a child and wondering how you feel about it. The toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We will continue here, and you can share your thoughts. Also want to let you know about freetalklive.com. There are all kinds of features on our website. We've got archives. So if you've missed a moment of the show, it's okay. You just go click and download as many episodes as you'd like, all totally free. And these episodes go back for years. You can go all the way back to late 2006 on the house. Those other talk show hosts, they want to charge you for accessing their site. Ours is free, so enjoy at freetalklive.com. We go to the phones and to the fun. We've got John in Wisconsin. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, John. Hey, man. Hey, yeah, that, that guy with the uh, kid in Hawaii, he had every right to do that. Are you kidding me? Make a kid walk a little bit? I mean, come on, I I do worse than that. I mean, I don't hit my kid or whatever, but, you know, she gets timeouts and everything and she don't act appropriately. I mean, what's so bad about walking a little bit? I used to have to walk five miles to and from school. Yeah, I, I imagine this really burns at the people who've actually <laughs> yeah, had to walk home from school on a regular basis. Like, you know, I guess that there's some people who... A uh, mile. Yeah. <laughs> I guess there were some people who would look at this uh, sort of from the free-range kids' perspective and say, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with what the the dad did here. Uh, You know, having a child walk home from school is no big deal, especially if they're ready for it, although some could argue that maybe the son wasn't ready for this, that it wasn't the son's choice. Uh, Sort of there's this uh, free-range kids' blog out there, and we've talked about some of the the issues they've brought up before. And and the the mom who started the blog What free-range kids does is it teaches kids about reality the real world and the real world is if you don't answer like somebody you know, your father who has the car that you may end up walking mm-hmm. so i think this fits firmly squarely into the free range parenting thing this isn't this isn't egregious he walked home from school one time for a mile i, I really don't see a problem with it you know i mean my daughter when she gets naughty or whatever her punishment is what my grandparents used to do to me. She got standing in the corner with her arms up. Well, I those got to be tired. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I mean, it's not excruciating, whatever. We don't make her do it for 30 minutes or whatever, but, you know, it's like a minute or two when she gets a point. John, thanks you know, for your I call, mean, man. I, walk. I appreciate hearing from you tonight. Let's talk to Barry in West Virginia. Barry, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, I have two scenarios. One, uh, I was in kindergarten, first grade, and I walked a mile from my school to my home. By yourself? Uh, no harm. Uh, no, I had older brothers, okay. older sisters. Yep. So, but I don't know how old this kid was. How old was this kid that walked? We don't a mile? know. We, that's the one part of this. Uh, that it's it's the X factor in this story. Okay. Well, did. did Depending on terrain and the neighborhoods and all that, that could be an issue. I would agree. Anyway, my second one is I was 10 years old. Uh, me and my brother and a few of our friends skipped school, and we went underneath the bridge and jumped off a pier into the water. And my mom found us, and she beat the living crap out of us. The thing is, to get to the pier, you had to cross over the uh, I-beam, right? Oh, and underneath the I beam are jagged rocks. Oh boy! About thirty feet, yeah, about thirty feet below. And when I got to the pier, I had a milk jug tied to my pants because I couldn't swim. So when she saw that, she got a switch and beat me for five 
blocks. So I think I deserve uh, a whooping of that. Did you ever do it again? Uh, what, go in the river or jump off the pier? I want to know whether you went over the I-beam um, across the jagged rocks. That was probably her concern. Uh, <laughs> no, but I did not stay away from the river. So. Okay. But anyway, this guy, he, he disciplined his kid the best of his ability, and the kid did not get hurt, so no harm, no foul. Barry, thanks for your call and thoughts here tonight. This, uh, You know what? I actually went to freerangekids.com, and sure enough, the story's right there, actually. She has commented on this. So just to, I didn't get a chance to uh, explain what Free Range Kids was, Mark, because you, you jumped in earlier. But Free Range Kids is a blog started by, I think her name's Lenore Skenazi. She was called by somebody on television, I don't know if it was The View or whoever it was, but somebody called her like the worst mother of all time or the worst, worst mother, mother of the year, or something, something like that, worst mother in the world, because she had allowed her son, who was, I think, 10, 9 or 10 at the time, in New York City to walk home or take a subway home from school, to walk, then take a subway home from school without a parent. And this caused, this touched off a firestorm of controversy. And the mom went ahead and she started this blog called Free Range Kids about how, you know, when your child's ready to grow up and walk somewhere on their own, they should be allowed to. Regardless of the fears of that you might have or that other parents might have or that a judge might have in this case. So she sums up the story, which we've already done for you. Dad got in trouble for, uh, you know, he's, he's on probation. He's got to take a parenting class. There's a $200 fine because he had his son walk home from school one day as a punishment. And Skenazi writes as her comment, there are predators out there. So, so kids should never be outside without an adult. Is anyone who lets their kids out of this slight uh, out of sight guilty of endangerment while we're at it? How are these different times? How does the fact that crime is at a 40 year low make walking home more dangerous than previous eras? It's true we don't know the age of the child involved, but we do know the judge's reasoning is that the world is particularly unsafe for children now. If that inaccurate perception becomes the standard of the courts, then nothing is safe and no parents can give their kids independence. Right. I mean, this, is, uh, this turns parenting into a minefield. Mm. This guy didn't have any clue that having his child walk home a mile from their school from his school because he wouldn't he was not he was being non-responsive i assume over a disciplinary issue that this was going to be a problem this boom it goes off the landmine goes off and and this warns parents across america there's crazy judges out there that are going to completely undermine your parenting yeah and all it would take would be some other parent to snitch you out. And this is, there was a, a case. how did the judge find out about this? I, something happened. Yeah. I don't know the answer, but yeah, somebody, somebody snitched him out. There was a case uh, last year out of Texas uh, where a judge said that spanking was child abuse. And the parent basically, you know, got in big, on, mm. in big trouble for spanking. Now, I think most places around America, this isn't, spanking isn't going to be considered child abuse, but this Parents are put on notice, I guess, is what um, you know. Every time these things change, I would think that this is a completely appropriate punishment, depending on the child's age, for not responding. Hey, you want to ride in this car? You want to ride in Daddy's car? You're going to answer Daddy's questions. So crime at a 40-year low, that's an important point here. And, of course, my thought was, well, some could argue that it's because parents are over-coddling their children that there's not as much crime. That the, could, somebody the, could. The kids aren't out in the streets. They're, you know, they're not alone. They're not walking home alone. So, therefore, there's but not as much all crime. all kinds of crime. But it's, yeah, it's all kinds of crime. It's not just crime against children, right? That's true. All right. So the toll-free number here is 855-453. -E as a parent or not as a parent, as, uh, as an observer of parents, I uh, would love to hear how you feel about this. Someone must agree with the judge. I mean, there are these overprotective parents out there, the kind of parents who are just frightened to death of anything and everything that could possibly bring a little bruise or a bump uh, to their child's uh, physical body or their ego. Uh, there, there are these people out there. They don't, I don't think, like to make an appearance. It doesn't seem like 
they must be listening to the show, right? I mean, somebody who has the viewpoint that, yeah, that that dad, he should be in trouble for sending his son home, walking home from school. That's a terrible parent. I can't imagine. I, I can't imagine anybody's going to take this side. No, I don't. Um, it, that's what makes me wonder about this is what is this child's age? What does this judge know we don't know? But this is the problem when getting involved in other people's business. This man thought he was making a good parenting choice. This judge doesn't think so. She's playing armchair quarterback on his parenting call. Right. And he doesn't get the freedom to make a choice. And sometimes, you know, maybe you don't make the right parenting choice. Maybe well, maybe a judge doesn't make the right decision. There's that. But, you know, if you don't make the right parenting choice, do you need to have probation as a punishment for it? Even if this was the wrong choice, let's say that was the case. Yeah. Let's say he was too young, for instance. Uh, not everybody agrees that it was too young, even if it was, you know, five years old. Uh, but... If you make the wrong choice, I don't think criminal penalties really need to apply. Nobody got hurt in this case. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Hour number three is on the way here on Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Every day you make investment decisions. When you do business with and hold U.S. dollars, you make an investment in the soundness of the moral philosophy and the potential longevity of the United States hegemony. People who claim a monopoly on violence around the world. If this is the investment that you want to make, please keep listening to LRN.FM. If not, stop using their currency. Use bitcoins. Get educated. We use coins.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Friday, May 30th, 2014. Radio VR News. President Obama has quietly hosted Hillary Clinton for lunch on Thursday. Big question is, why? White House correspondent Mark Smith reports. The former Secretary of State slipped into the White House unannounced, and though the president's aides confirmed the lunch happened, they won't discuss it. In fact, since it wasn't on Obama's public schedule, the only reason we know about it is because Clinton had an interview with People magazine about her upcoming book, Hard Choices, and the magazine tweeted about it. As to what actually transpired between the current president and his party's top candidate to be the next, the best that can be said is, oh, to be a fly on the wall. Mark Smith at the White House. Police in California say they knew about threatening videos during a welfare check on the young man who later killed six people. Ed Donahue has more on the man involved in the Santa Barbara killing spree. The Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Department now says deputies who checked on Elliot Roger were aware he posted some disturbing videos, but they never looked at them before or after it was determined Roger was not a threat to himself or others. 
The department also revealed Roger uploaded the final video titled Day of Retribution at 9.17 p.m. on the day of the attacks. One minute later, he emailed a lengthy manifesto detailing his plans. The first gunshots were fired 10 minutes later. Eight minutes after that, Elliot Roger was dead. I'm Ed Donahue. Donald Sterling's days of owning the L.A. Clippers could be over. Sources say the NBA franchise is close to being sold for a record amount. Correspondent Mike Myers has more on the potential buyer. The L.A. Clippers are reportedly being sold for a record $2 billion. Steve Ballmar, the former CEO of Microsoft, who has an estimated net worth of $20 billion, won a frenetic bidding war for ownership of the team. The sale price is nearly four times the highest previous price paid for an NBA franchise. Donald Sterling was forced to sell the Clippers after he was banned for life by the NBA recently for making racist comments in a secret audio recording. The prospective deal is expected to get the approval of the 29 other NBA owners during a June 3rd hearing. Mark Myers, Los Angeles. Google's workforce is mostly made up of white men, according to diversity data from the tech giant, but the company says that's something it wants to change. Sandy Kozell has the details. Under growing pressure on the tech industry to hire more minorities and women, Google has released statistics documenting the diversity of its workforce. The numbers show 70% of the people working at the search giant are men. 61% of the workers are white. In a blog, Google's senior vice president says, simply put, the company is not where it wants to be when it comes to diversity. I'm Sandy Kozell. Car crashes across the country don't just drive up insurance rates, they also cost the economy a bundle. Correspondent Diane Kepler reports on the price of automobile accidents. The economic impact from the crashes amounted to more than $870 billion in 2010 and was the equivalent of nearly 2% of the country's gross domestic product. Among the factors that weigh in are lost productivity, property damage, and the cost of medical and rehabilitation treatment and costs to employers. The way people act also plays a role, with speeding, alcohol use, and distracted driving accounting for more than half the cost. Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox is expected to use the results of the study to press for larger fines for recall violations to keep automakers from concealing safety defects. Diane Kepley, Washington. Two boys have been declared co-champions of the National Spelling Bee for the first time in 52 years. Violet Economova has the story. It didn't look good for 14-year-old Sriram Hathwar in round 16 of the finals. K-O-R-B-R-U-I-T-E-R, Corbuter. But because Sri Ram was the first speller, his opponent Anson Sujo had to get his word right to win. Anson did not, and the pair went back and forth for about a dozen more rounds until the word list ran out and they were named co-champions. The competition was against the dictionary, not against each other. Uh, I'm happy to share this trophy with him. That audio of Sri Ram, courtesy of ESPN. I'm Violet Ikonomova. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Ziggle. And I'm Rick Young. The latest news from around the world. We are Radio VR in Washington. Jared Gilchrist was surfing when he was attacked by a shark that took his leg. Thanks for being with us, big guy. Thanks, this is tight. What was going through your mind when you first realized that you were there with a shark all alone in open water? It felt like a total badass. It bit into my leg and started shaking it back and forth, and at that point I just felt, yes, this is sweet. I can't imagine what it would have been like to see the teeth sinking into your leg like that. It was sick. At one point, I just saw my leg just floating there in the water. It was awesome. Okay, we're joined now via satellite by Dr. Brian Caddy. What condition was Jared's leg in when you first saw him? It was in pretty rough shape. Uh, the shark had scissored through the muscle and it was all just like hanging off the bone. It was, uh, it was nuts. Yeah, I kept touching it. It was slimy as hell. Yeah, totally. It was, uh, it was insane. Well, doctor, how do you deal with something like this? Well, you know, you're never fully prepared for an injury this freaking cool. Uh, you know, we just tried to stop the blood loss and we took a bunch of photos because it's hysterical to freak out the nurses with gnarly shit like this. This is the Onion News Network. The 
This is Free Talk Live. We are launching into the third hour of the program. It is the live Saturday edition of the show. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. Don't forget, you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you. You can actually control the content of the site by submitting to it and voting upon the various different things on the front page there. You can uh, do that through Reddit. We've actually tied in our website with Reddit, so you do have to have a Reddit account. That's free. The Free Talk Live account is free. It takes a moment to link the two together. And then uh, from that point forward, you can easily interact with the content right there on the front page, which was created by listeners just like you. So go to freetalklive.com to get interactive, to bring you up to speed Mark, you brought in a story from uh, some Hawaiian news service, was it? Well, it's it? actually from, um, from, originally from a Hawaiian news service, but from HuffingtonPost.com. About a dad who is in trouble. He's got a year's probation. He's got a $200 fine. He has a parenting class that he'll have to take. All because he picked his son up from school. Now, we don't know how old the, the son is. We don't even know if it was in elementary school, do we? Do we even know that no. much? Uh, so we have no clue how old the uh, the child in question I is. I can't imagine it's not an elementary school, though. Um, Dad's picking him up, and he asks his son about some sort of incident that had happened at the school. His son didn't give him the answer that he was expecting. In fact, I don't think he answered at all. And Dad said, all right, that's it. You're walking home. Get out of the car. And so his son walked home. Apparently he made it home. I'm not real clear on exactly how it was that the courts ended up with this particular case. Maybe his son didn't make it home. Maybe the cops stopped him on the way home, and then they went and arrested Dad uh, when they brought it, they brought his son home. I'm not real sure how that all played out, but we know that the judge sentenced this man to a year's probation and all the rest of the stuff I told you about. So you know, it sort of opened up the conversation about parenting and just the safety of a child to walk somewhere from point A to point B. I mean, the uh, the suggestion from this judge is that there's all these criminals lurking in the bushes and, you know, we've got to protect the kids and that means you can't let them out of your sight. And I think it's ridiculous. I mean, I can remember being in kindergarten and first grade and being able to leave my house and go run around the neighborhood with my friends. And I rode my bike to the next street, co- street over. Yeah, I mean, there was like a... Uh, there was a little river that went back behind the neighborhood, and we'd go back there, and we'd, you know, play what kids do. they run around and do things. Looking and, for crawdads. And uh, I don't think we had crawdads. So it was just a, just a river back Your there. river stunk. I guess so. But, um, you know, there was never an issue. There was never a concern. I mean, there, I don't even recall. I mean, maybe my parents told me about you know, strangers. Hey, you don't get in a car with a stranger. Don't go with a stranger, that kind of thing. And I'm pretty sure they gave me that information. But it, I never felt like I was being overprotected or told I couldn't do things or, or anything like that. And now, if you you know your son walks home from school, it's a, it's a crime. It's child endangerment. Let's go to the phones here, get your calls and thoughts. Oh, you know what? Our call screening software had said during the news that somebody actually wanted to take the side of the judge on this. Because so far, all of the calls on this topic have been, yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, Dad should have allowed, should have been allowed to punish his son by making him walk home from school. Uh, there was one guy who said he was walking to school uh, a mile a day as in, in kindergarten. What's the big deal? Even if it was kindergarten, one guy said, what's the big deal here? But that guy, unfortunately, the person who wanted to take the judge's side has dropped off the line. So Always we'll go, happens. We'll go to you and your thoughts about whatever's on your mind here. Uh, and, of course, you can comment on this. And you're uh, just to generally right. the larger I, topic. I don't want to lambast somebody for their opinion on this particular topic. I'm interested in what the concern is. Is it lurking people in vans ready to mm-hmm. scoop up small children? They exist. They're not nearly the problem that people make them out to be, but they right. exist. Um, is it that you think that a young kid's legs can't carry them a, a quarter mile, or a, 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 excuse me, a mile? Is it that you think? Cars are more dangerous than they used to be. I just remember being rather young and riding my bicycle all around, cars being, you know, making it. Everything was fine. So your calls are are welcome. On a larger topic as well of this overprotecting of children, uh, which seems to be a problem that's fairly fairly, uh, common in our society, let's go to the phones and your calls and thoughts. Tom is in North Dakota listening to KNOX in Grand Forks. Hey, Tom. Hi, how are you today? Great. Go ahead with your thoughts. Yes, sir. I, my my one thought is, unfortunately, you don't know is how did the the, the law enforcement find out about this to charge this man, uh, which is a crying shame. And then, 
what kind of message is this sending to this kid? It's telling him that he can pretty much get away with anything, honestly. Uh, I mean, doggone right. I wonder if you don't like what Dad's doing, call the police. Tom. Yeah, yeah. Call call the police if if you don't like something that's happening. Call the police, and Dad's gonna get in trouble again. And and the other fact is, you're right about about the uh, the judge had no business giving this guy any kind of sentence whatsoever. Yeah, and, one, of the, and a fine. one of the problems is uh, when when you educate kids about child abuse and that kind of thing. And, and I think kids need to be educated about child abuse. I, I don't have a problem with that. But the thing is, is that it doesn't take a, it, you know, every kid understands that this is a lever that can be used against the parents. They don't understand the consequences of using that lever. But I can tell you, uh, I remember a friend of mine in uh, a rage and upset at his parents made the threat that he was going to, you know, claim child abuse uh, to his parents, and uh, I mean, they the look in the the look in their eyes at that moment was a bit of it was fear. Mm, I bet. And uh, you know, what Absolutely. do you what do you do as a parent if you you don't have the ability to even just moderately discipline kids? This wasn't a kid that had been beaten with an iron rod a few minutes before that. This is a kid who didn't get something purchased for him that he wanted. Yes, sir. Tom, yep. thanks Thanks for your call and the thoughts. Appreciate hey. it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Brandon is in Charleston, West Virginia, listening to WVTS. Hello, Brandon. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Welcome, sir. Uh, I got a couple things. First of all, I, I've done this exact same thing a couple years ago when my daughter was 10, and uh, she was misbehaving in the back seat, and uh, I'd gotten on her, told her to calm down, and she kicked the seat, thrown mm. a a temper tantrum. G- gave you and a good kick, her, huh? <laughs> yeah, I told Call her, the police. Not. You're, you're not acting this way in the car. And I told her, get out and walk, which she didn't make it home. She stopped on a bench and sat there and pouted until I eventually gave in and, and give her a ride. It's home. petrifying, she, isn't it? <laughs> you know, that's your kid she, out there. She walked, she walked about a half a mile. But uh, I, I was going to throw out a couple other facts that I read on a online newspaper. I don't know if you want me to tell the name of the newspaper about, me. about this about this case it, it was the blaze okay the blaze yeah uh, that's according Glenn to the blaze, yeah uh, according to the blaze the boy was nine years old awesome somebody has an, a number for us okay and the the way that all this came about with the dad getting arrested and everything according to Glenn Beck's page was that a uh, another person in a separate vehicle seen the boy crying, upset, walking home, picked him up and took him to the police station. Whoa. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, this is, this, I can see why somebody might see a kid walking home crying and say, I don't know what to do. This is, this seems bad, right? Like if you saw somebody walking along crying, you want to solve the problem. So that what's... seems like a risky thing to do to pull over and talk to some kid. I mean, did the person even know that the child? Uh, did, hey, you look like you're having a tough time, young man. Do you want to come in my car and we'll take you to the police? I mean, just a bizarre. Right, could have taken him anywhere. Could have taken him to a hotel room no, or who knows right. where. Who should have been arrested yeah. here? The person who picked up a kid on the side of the road? Or... <laughs> no, wow. whenever I had done this, she was my daughter was ten, so a year older than this kid. I had made her think that I'd left, but I'd went off and watched from a distance. Yep. Which is how I knew she was sitting at the park bench pouting, and I eventually drove back and picked her up. But she, you know, she lost the attitude. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that was the, that was the point. Fine. Yeah. Thanks, but, uh, Brandon. I appreciate you taking my call. Yeah, man. And, Thanks for uh, making the I call. Just... We appreciate hearing from you tonight. The toll free number is 855 450 free. So there you go little bit more information somebody managed to do the digging and uh, appreciate the blaze for doing that nine years old certainly old enough to be able to walk home from school although some would disagree some would say that you know this is dangerous it's scary out there you got to call the police if you've got a family problem 855 450 free of course you call the police things are tending uh, going to tend to get worse in a lot of cases it's free talk live What if you could combine the two most powerful diet ingredients into one incredible weight loss super pill? 
We've done just that. For the first time ever, the miracle fat burner in a bottle, Raspberry Ketone, has been combined with pure Garcinia Cambogia, described as the holy grail of weight loss, to bring you the world's most powerful diet pill. Get your phone ready, because we're releasing free bottles to the first 100 callers. But wait, we haven't just combined the two most powerful weight loss ingredients. We've combined the six most powerful ingredients. Green coffee bean, African mango, moringa, and glucomonin. All the hottest clinically proven weight loss ingredients combined into one fat-shedding super pill. We call it the Skinny Six Super Supplement, and it's available for the very first time. Be one of the first 100 callers and we'll rush you a free bottle. Call 1-800-514-2945. Find out how to get your free bottle. 1-800-514-2945. 1-800-514-2945. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm. This time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It is the Saturday edition of the program. That means we're here live, just as we are every single night of the week, seven nights a week. We're live. If you don't get us on every on your local radio station, your local talk station, you don't get us all seven nights a week, call and talk to the program director and ask him real nicely to add some more Free Talk Live. And if you don't get Free Talk Live on your local radio station at all, then call and ask real nicely to get some Free Talk Live. You never know. One phone call can make a big difference. For a program director out there, it's nice to hear from somebody with some positive feedback about something they'd like to hear rather than things that they hate hearing on the existing station. So your feedback goes a long way. 
Don't forget, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. You can also join us in real life at the upcoming North American Bitcoin Conference in Chicago, the Chicago Cormac Place South Building. It's July 19th and 20th. The speakers are going to be all kinds of folks from the Liberty uh, community as well as the Bitcoin world. Trace Meyer of the Armory Wallet, Peter Smith of blockchain.info, Flip Filipkowski of the Peace Action Network, and uh, Jeff Berwick, the Dollar Vigilante, Roger Veer, also known as Bitcoin Jesus, Tony Gallippi from BitPay. These are just some of the speakers that will be appearing at btcchicago.com is where you can go and get your tickets. The North American Bitcoin Conference. You've heard about Bitcoin. You've heard us talking about this amazing decentralized currency that is taking the world by storm. It's currently over $600 per Bitcoin. That's more than all of the world's currencies combined in value. It's an amazing phenomenon. And what better place to go and learn more about it than where the experts are hanging out? And you know, so whether you're new, a total noob to Bitcoin, or you're experienced and you've been in the, the Bitcoin world for a while, there's going to be something of value for for you at the North American Bitcoin Conference. I'm excited about going. I've, I've really, you know, we, we're going to a lot of these Bitcoin conferences, and they've all been great. So I expect this one is going to be great as well. And from what I understand, it's the first one happening in the, in the Midwest, btcchicago.com. Yeah. And you can, of course, buy your tickets in Bitcoin if you prefer at btcchicago.com. We go and continue with your calls and thoughts here. Rob's in Lynchburg listening to WLNI-FM. Hey, Rob. Hey, guys. Uh, this Hawaii thing is crazy. Uh, I'd like to go two directions with it. One, uh, just our society has been chickified to a dramatically terrible level. I mean, chickified. Every parent is a hack. Now we've got a helicopter parenting is now, I guess, mandatory. But don't you think there's plenty of male helicopter uh, parents? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's a generalization. Okay. But, I mean, you know, it, it's no, it's no uh, coincidence that the father was the one who said, hey, go walk down the road. You know, Maybe. Uh, but yeah. and it's, a female, it's a female judge saying that this is old school and, and saying things that it are factually It fits the stereotype, incorrect. doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, most stereotypes do. Of course, there are exceptions. The other thing is just a dramatic, uh, these family courts and the, the power that government has over your children, despite the fact that the Supreme Court's ruled a thousand times that it's a basic fundamental right and the state needs to back off. Um, so th there is a, a, a organization called parentalrights.org. They are trying to get a parental rights amendment through the Congress. It's got 75 co-sponsors. And all it says is just that you know, raising your child is a fundamental right, so that you know, it just sets a standard of review so that judges can't do like this. I mean, there's no legal basis for any court to rule on this, up or down. There's, there's no abuse here. The kid's walking down a road. Yeah, I think that – well, I think that one could – you know the questions: uh, How old would, would be the child be? How busy is the road? I think is uh, are the questions that most people would ask. You know, what are the conditions on the road? Um, I'm looking at the Blaze, which seems to have the best story on this um, here at theblaze.com, and apparently the caller said the child was uh, nine; he was eight, um, and. You know, the road, it's a 55-mile-an-hour road, but it's got a big lip on the side, and it's this picture, it's well mowed. <laughs> so, I mean, I know I've gone down roads like this when I was a kid. I'm sorry. I, I don't care if the kid is going to—it's not a court to decide. The child is not a, a ward of the state. The state does not own your children. That's not the what the parents, state thinks. Well, exactly, but I mean, you know, don't make me just, just sit here and read Supreme Court quotes. No, please, it's, please it's, don't uh, read <laughs> the Supreme Court quotes. I mean, look, I mean, the, the, the state does believe they own your children. That's why they'll punish you if you don't send them to the state schools or you know get some sort of exemption from the state. Right. Well, you know, Scalia said that that kind of idea is repugnant to the American tradition that the state, uh, the, you know, the state can control you because some people abuse their kids. The state, you know, by default is the authority. It's not. The parent is the authority. And on, on the other thing, there's a really good book called Free Range Kids by a woman named Lenore Skenazy, and she has a website for that. Uh, and basically, she's just telling other women to give them permission to raise their kids like we were raised. You know, it, it's okay. There, there aren't more predators now than there were in the 70s. Nope. There aren't. 
They're on, they're on Fox News. I mean, we're talking about a minor case that's a local story in Hawaii because the press. Rob, thanks for your call and thanks, thoughts. Sir. I appreciate it. 855 450 free. And yes, we were talking earlier about the Free Range Kids blog. I didn't realize she had written a book, but it figures that uh, that she did. It's, Makes sense. It's good. Well, there it is right there at the top of her website. Free Range Kids. Yeah, that's her book. <laughs> it's and not the kind of book that you would necessarily pay money to get, right? You don't have any kids. Oh well, I think it's, it'd probably be a really good book, though. I mean, I'm I not would, saying that you that the in, yeah. that people. Listening, I would not. Yeah, yes. I see what you're saying. I would not. You, yes. a 30 year old male with uh, no kids, probably aren't the prime demographic for that book. But I do enjoy the blog, and uh, I'm actually a subscriber of the blog. As a matter of fact, I think you it's know, interesting. I, I I sympathize with what the the caller was saying. As as the father in a two parent household, I find that I am the one that uh, is nudging my son a little more out of the nest uh, than his mm. uh, than his mother does and I, you know I don't think that this is necessarily a gender role thing but I get the the stereotype and I, you know what I've let him go off and I've watched him as he walks off into the woods or to go play with other kids at uh, the, at the pork at pork fest I let him go now it's terrifying to me and I follow him <laughs> but um you know I mean that's that's I think that's what you got to do. He's got to believe that he can go off by himself and do these things. Share your thoughts. 855-450-FREE. Dennis is in Rise Junction, Michigan, listening to WKHM. Hey, Dennis. Hello. Hey, you're uh, on the air. Hello, guys. Uh, okay, I'm kind of uh, not, I'm not understanding the punishment aspect of this because it seems to me the father was doing what the state is calling for because Michelle Obama is calling for the children to get up and move at least an hour a day. <laughs> so I'm thinking if the father didn't have the child at least an hour away from home, then maybe there might be something wrong there. But the child probably should have been taken at least an hour away from home to, uh, you know, fulfill the government's requirement <laughs> of uh, moving at least an hour a day. They must move in you a know? padded yeah. room or a government-sanctioned institution. Those are the mm -hmm. only places they're allowed to move. And I would almost bet that this, this precious child has rode his bicycle up and down that road thousands of times in his lifetime already. Is that so? so I just believe so. Oh, you I, believe I so? Was oh, kind I of a uh, there, There's been so much in different articles here that I, I can't claim to be an expert on all of them. Dennis, appreciate your call on Thoughts Tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Where are the overprotective parents? I know you exist, and uh, those of you who agree with the judge really want to hear your rationale. Why was this a bad choice to have the son walk home from school? A mile, a whole mile. It's Free Talk Live. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, thanks to Dan Pillow, you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. Or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. 
Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You know how annoying it is when someone keeps stopping mid-sentence as though he or she were asking you a series of questions? Avoid doing that. It sounds unnervingly tentative, and it imposes upon the listener to help you complete the thought. And if you're a job seeker, this alone could be a deal killer. An effective communicator sounds more confident. Complete the thought. Avoid making the listener impatient. With money and attention so scarce now, Effective communication skills have never been more important. Cutting through the clutter rather than blending into the blah, blah, blah will help you connect better no matter what the conversation. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Survivalspeech.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything. All you have to do is dial in toll-free here at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Dad is in trouble for making his son walk home from school a whole mile. Apparently his son was eight years old at the time of this happening, and uh, Dad is now on probation. He's on probation for a year, $200 fine. He'll have to take a parenting class, which I guess the content of the parenting class will essentially be to teach dad that if he has his own ideas on how to discipline his child, he should just hold off on that and instead go ahead and just ask the government every time he wants to do something, every time he has an idea about how to handle uh, his son or daughter, that he should call the state first because you wouldn't want to get in any trouble now for disciplining your children. That's what's happened here is he came up with an idea to discipline his son uh, which, you know, maybe happened to him when he was a kid, is he made his son walk home from school. And I don't see what the problem is with this. And so far, the callers tonight have not seen the problem with this uh, either. That is, with making his son walk home from school. Argument ad populum. Uh, people do seem to... It's an observation, Mark. I'm not arguing. Um, the callers tonight have not had a problem with how Dad handled this situation. Now, one caller earlier suggested that this was a chick thing, uh, that, uh, that the America has been chickified, which I think is insulting to, uh, to to women. The suggestion being that uh, you know women are more likely to be overprotective. But Mark, you're saying you've seen that in in your family with your wife. Well, it just you know I think that there, I think that generalizations uh, are generalizations oftentimes for a reason. Not every time, but oftentimes. I'm you know I don't know that it forwards the conversation to point it out, but there it is. I would. Uh, you know, I, I think that this is uh, it, it's an interesting story. Uh, we, at what age does a, is a kid able to walk a, a mile along a relatively busy street? It's not a mm -hmm. it's not a you know, this is not some kind of residential street or something like that. This thing's it's a wide it's got a wide lip, no sidewalk um, mm, okay. uh, on a 
a, a 50 mile an hour speed limit road. Now, 55 says it's the fact that it's not 55 says to me that it's not a highway, uh, but hmm, it's 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 not it's not a, uh, you know a poorly traveled road. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. You can share whatever's on your mind. And uh, blockchain, by the way, has done it again. We've talked about the blockchain app for your personal smartphone. That's available for you at blockchain.info. Uh, if you've got an Android phone, if you've uh, got an iPhone, you're going to have to use their web wallet, which works also very, very well. It's a great way to get Bitcoins on your phone and accessible from your phone. So blockchain.info is great at that. Now, blockchain.com is their sister site that they've started recently to market, um, and I don't know if market's the right term because it doesn't cost you anything, to promote, to get into your hands the new blockchain merchant app. If you have a physical location where you want to accept Bitcoins from your customers, Grab the Blockchain Merchant app at blockchain.com. There's no terms of service, no ID requirements of any kind. You just go download the app from the Google Play Store and get started. Zero fees, by the way, blockchain.com. We go and continue with your calls and thoughts. Greg is in Lynchburg listening to WLNI. Hello, Greg. Uh, hello. Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Hey. Uh, oh, I was like, I was thinking when I was a child, you had to walk one or two blocks to get to the bus stop to ride the school bus. I went further than that. Yeah. But but nowadays, they're stopping at every driveway. Seriously? Yes. Where I'm at, every 30 feet, if you're a regular child that lives at that house, they are going to stop at that driveway to pick up the child. It's unbelievable. And... When my stepkids were coming up, I lived two blocks from the school, and they come and pick them up from the house because they were not allowed to walk two blocks to school. What kind of neighborhood was it? How what kind of roads were between there and school? It, it was just the side roads. I lived mm-hmm. down the, two blocks from the school, down on the side road. There was no major traffic, but you had to. They come and pick them up, and they took them to school. Greg, thanks for care. Uh, thanks for the call and the thoughts tonight. Toll free number is eight fifty five four. No wonder we're fat. Free ladies first. Gene is on the line in Benson uh, Benton Harbor, Michigan. Gene, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, how are you? Hey, Gene, what's on your mind tonight? Well, I've been sitting here listening to the program, and what I can't figure out is how did this? Well, shame on the judge a little for in the first place, but how did it get in front of the judge? I come up from a family with law enforcement and I can't believe that one of someone in my family who's in law enforcement wouldn't have had the dad come in and stopped this and had a you know a talk with the son probably helped back the dad up and then sent him on home how did it even get to the stage where it went past law enforcement where it went in front of a judge well, the uh, I'm, I'm shocked. A stranger picked I'm up. I'm shocked that it even got to that level. Uh, of the boy was crying, walking along the road. A stranger pulled over, picked him up, uh, took him back to the school. The uh, when the the father didn't know where his son was, you know, going back on the road. What happened? What happened? You know, my mm. dis- my dis- my great disciplinary plan failed. <laughs> um, and then uh, he's, I, I he calls the police, and uh, you know, they tell him to come get his son or and whatever, and they put him under that, arrest. But, and I well. See, but there's a step in between. So my brother-in-law is the undersheriff. I'm sure somebody comes in to the police station, and that happens. They get the father in. They ask the questions. And then it's it's pretty much sorted out. They don't – I don't think necessarily that they – I can't believe that it went down that road. <laughs> Surprise! Because they brought a child in. Well, there may you know be, what I'm saying? There may I, be. I'm, 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 the- I'm shocked about the judge, but before the judge – I'm shocked about the police officers that it got to I'm not shocked. Died. Well, the police police I'm officers appalled. may be populated by a, a group of largely reasonable people. I don't know. I'm just saying may. Um, but the fact is, is it only takes it only takes a few. And the the let's be a little more careful sort of con- concept always drags it along. Oh, well, if Johnny fell down and bumped his head, I guess we should take him to the hospital. You know, because, I mean, you never want to be the one who suggested, nah, don't worry about it. Turns out he's got internal injuries. I know, but this is like off the charts kind of backwards to me. 
Okay, um, Gene, I, I appreciate I your frustration and uh, I appreciate your frustration and confusion. It doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, I, we've seen so many stories where police have just done ridiculous things when it comes to family uh, disciplinary matters or disciplining uh, children at school. It wouldn't have surprised me if this young, uh, this boy was brought into the police department and the cops were having a conversation about, all right, well, this guy's coming in to get his kid. What can we charge him with? I mean, they, they these That's guys want to. The whole point. Yeah, that's my whole point. Everybody's kind of crucifying the judge, rightfully so. But why is anybody bringing up the police officers? They, they're the first line. It's true. It they is certainly the fault of the about, police that, horrible. that this happened. I thank yeah. you, Gene, for your well, call. I appreciate hearing from you. Police prosecutor judge, um, you know, that... Yeah, but the police initiated the aggression against this man. Had it, they not charged him initially, the prosecutor and the judge would never have gotten the, the I also story. wonder, if, if I was the one to pull over to pick up this kid, and I can see why somebody would pull over to pick up a crying kid. I'd be scared to death to do something like that. I mean, I, that's like, whoa, not even... You want to talk about getting into a dangerous territory with possible criminal charges? That would seem very risky. I gotcha. The place I wouldn't take them is to the police station or to school or whatever. I'd be like, How, where, where's your house? Let's get mm. you home. I mean, uh, you know, my son is six years old and can give Does his, he address. his address. Okay. Yes, he, he knows his address. He knows his mommy and daddy's telephone numbers, those mm-hmm. kind of things. He should be able to rattle those off anytime somebody uh, picks him up. If, if that was to happen, I, you know, this is he's a little young for this. This is not my world. Maybe the person in the car thought they would be safest if they went to the police, whereas if they took them to the dad's house, yeah. dad could say, the hell are you doing picking up my son? And then he'll call the police. It. You never know. Kids. Kids are so. It's a, such a touchy scenario. People just don't. Uh, people just don't handle their own problems these days, and that's one of the other problems with uh, society is that people are likely to call the police to solve an issue. We've had parents call police on their kids when they were having disciplinary issues at home, as though the police were going to come and solve the issues. They just make things worse and they escalate a situation. They put someone in handcuffs. It's free talk live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Attention America, within a little-known government document is devastating information that could cost the United States its most valuable asset. My name is Jeff Opdyke, former reporter for the Wall Street Journal. I've uncovered shocking evidence within the details of document FT-900, revealing the largest cover-up of President Obama's career. This will have a substantial impact on our nation. Millions of Americans will fall into poverty overnight. A recent report from the Treasury Department said an event of this nature has, quote, the potential to be catastrophic. Within a matter of weeks, the way of life for millions of Americans will be destroyed, and the standard of living will be like nothing this country has seen in nearly a century. To learn how you can protect yourself and your family from this government attack, visit www.obamasecret1.com. Again, that's www.obamasecret1.com. Free Talk Live. It's not just zoning rules. It's everything. It's true. It's everything. There's there's so many so many laws. You can't possibly know them. It's physically an impossibility to know the laws. You know not to hurt other people. I don't need a law telling me to do that. But the rest of them? Totally inaccessible. It's true. It's written in legalese. If you don't have training in reading that crap, it might as well be a foreign language. Mm. And as you pointed out, it doesn't matter if you can read it. I thought I had them dead to rights. 
And <laughs> these bureaucrats, <laughs> they just, they just like, no, we do whatever we want here at the zoning board. Yeah, that's right. And you'll kiss our butts. Pee on. Surf. You'll, <laughs> you'll slave. Do, you'll do what we say. Yeah. Why label them citizens? Oh. Why not just call it what it is? You're a surf. You're a slave. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. If you're already on the line, we may be able to get you in here. If you're not, don't bother. Uh, Because the phones are almost completely loaded up. And uh, the Skype is loaded up, and I don't know if we're going to get to everybody. If we don't get to you tonight, no worries. We do it seven nights a week. You can join us tomorrow for the live Sunday edition. Even if we're not on your local radio station at that time, you can still call the show, and you can still participate. You can still listen later on by downloading our podcast at freetalklive.com, or rather downloading our episodes via the podcast or direct download, whatever is your preference. We've got all kinds of downloads uh, for you at freetalklive.com, not just episodes of Free Talk Live, but we also have the Free Talk Live Weekly Digest, which is a uh, about 60-minute, 75-minute long uh a piece of content, a uh, an MP3 file that comes out on a weekly basis that is essentially a highlight reel of Free Talk Live, at least one listener's preferences as far as what he thought. Benjamin Bartholomew is our listener putting He's this together. He's a producer. We've promoted producer, him. Right? Um, he is uh, doing a great job and has been doing it. You know, you say we promoted him. It's not like he's getting paid. Um, <laughs> he's doing it on his own volition, and he's accepting donations. So I don't know. Maybe he's getting paid more than we are, Mark. I really have no idea. Uh, but you can show your support for Benjamin. He actually puts a QR code on every one of these podcasts or every episode of the Weekly Digest that he releases. So if you appreciate his efforts, and if you listen to his show, if you listen to the Weekly Digest, send the guy something as a thank you. Because it takes some time to listen to I mean, he has to listen to all the shows, all you know, 14 podcast hours per week, and then boil down what he thinks are the best segments edit them out and cut them all together into the same mp3 file there's some work involved in this and we appreciate uh the efforts so you can get that if you subscribe to our podcast at freetalklive.com as well as episodes of the edgington post mark who did you have on most recently on the edgington post well i had on jessica armand the uh, creator of my magic mud oh cool yep she uh she explained it in more detail and that's one of the things i do with the edgington post is i interview advertisers on Free Talk Live because sometimes 30 seconds or 60 seconds isn't enough to sort of tell the story of an advertiser. So I do that. Among uh, other people I interview, you know, sort of liberty luminaries and historians and people I find interesting, uh, advertisers too. So you can get all those episodes and all those things through our podcast and online at freetalklive.com. Plus, you can listen live and get interactive in a variety of different ways. And support the show through the AMP program at amp.freetalklive.com. We appreciate it if you do that, too. Virgil's in Lynchburg listening to WLNI. Go ahead, Virgil, with your thoughts tonight. Yeah, um, I would say I think the father did make a mistake. Um, I think his 8-year-old son or daughter, I'm not sure which one was. Son. Uh, obviously wasn't ready to walk, whatever the distance is. The fact that the child got into a car, the stranger lets me know that this child wasn't ready or in the emotional state to walk home. And so I think with the parent's responsibility to recognize that, or at least if he's going to put the child out, follow him and make sure he's going to, 
he's going to get home okay. But to put him out and leave him, uh, obviously this kid wasn't ready. He was crying. He got into a car with a stranger. Well, obviously, you, big, you, you know, the son, your son's going to cry when he's being punished, uh, you know, made to do something he doesn't want to do. I mean, clearly, he's not going to want to walk home after dad was just, you know, in he was just in the car with his dad. If you cease the punishment because the child's crying, you're not going to be punishing your child too much. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, but the, the fact that he was crying would make me watch my child. I, 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 I agree. I would let my child out if they, got, if they were doing something wrong. I have no problem with kids walking home. Um, but I think you have to teach your kids or know that they are able to do that. And even if my kids were upset and they got out crying, I know they know never to get into a car with a stranger. So the fact that this kid did lets me know obviously he ha- either hadn't been trained mm. to do that or uh, wasn't in the emotional state to make a good decision. And as a parent, I would watch my kid. If they, if they got out and they were crying – I would still drive off. I would just drive around the corner drive and watch around, and see yeah. what yeah. they did. I, I yeah, don't think I would have sure done what this guy did. I don't think I would have done what this father did. But here's the here's the real question, Virgil. What do we do about it? Do you think a two hundred dollar th- fine and a, and a year of probation is appropriate? <laughs> uh, do you think a crime you know, that, that this should be then, a crime? Yeah, you know, but then your your previous guest, I agree. I mean, this is something that the police officers had to handle. And I guess we live in a, in a state now where everything, everyone is so hypersensitive. So if they didn't do anything and then three months later we found out that the kid was abused, then everyone would be mad at the yep. police for not reporting it or not doing anything and just sending the kid home. And so, you know, I guess as a police officer, you have to weigh that kind of, you know, you're in a tough decision because you, I agree. I would have just said, all right, hey, Dad, don't do that again, man. You need to watch your kid. You, you're you're lucky he made it. Go home, you'll be okay. But then you have to worry about the risk of what if this kid is really being abused, and two months down the road we hear about. There's no you risk know, to the police; they can't be held liable. So, I mean, I understand they, that. Yeah, they they second guess, though. They would be liable, but everyone would be mad. Everyone would be like, oh, the police should have did this two months ago. They had a, a warning then, and they didn't take Yeah, but now most people uh, are mad because they did do I'm something. I'm not sure it's true. Let's look at that the right. shooter in California. Um, the shooter in California was interviewed by the police uh, you know, recently, and they couldn't, didn't do anything about it, and no one's holding them responsible. I don't even hold them responsible, and I'm probably the biggest critic of law enforcement out, um, among the biggest critics <laughs> out there, and I don't even think the police could have done anything about this rich kid going out and capping people mm-hmm. because he couldn't get any booty. Um, you know, right. it's so no one's no one's second guessing the police in that particular instance. But I don't know. It's 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 a tough call. Thanks, Virgil. I appreciate hearing from yeah, you tonight. Definitely. Let's go to Tony in Detroit. You're on Free Talk Live, Tony. Yeah, hi there, guys. Uh, yeah, I think that judge is out of her mind, man. She's wrong. I think that authorities ought to stay out of everybody's business. You know, I, I mean, like I say, I'm in Detroit. I'm proud of it. I remember when I was a kid. Weren't you in Alabama last out. week and your name was Michael? I mean, you could just be honest with who you are and where you're calling from, but it's fine. You don't have to. Yeah, well, anyway, no, I, I am, you know, Tony, actually, you know, so. But I can't anyway, understand where you're And saying. I am calling from Detroit anyway, so okay. anyway. But, uh, you know, I was a kid. I said, uh, well, Michael's my middle name, okay? So, All right. But anyway, you know, as a little kid, man, I'm out there and, and I'm going to school, kindergarten back. I ain't got no problems at all. Eight years old, I'm taking my baby brother out in a stroller ride. I'm like, yeah, we play out at night as late as we want to. And nobody says nothing, man. I don't have no problems in my life until a dog hug, man. And I remember down in Florida one day, I was sitting on a bus bench waiting for the bus to come because I got off work. His car comes in there. Hey, man, don't be sitting there when the sun comes down. I'm like, that, you know. But here, when I'm a kid, I got no problems. I get an adult and I have all this. But I just judges, I think, the police, everybody should stay on everybody's business. In my neighborhood back in them days, the police weren't even allowed in our neighborhood. Man. Thanks for the call, Tony. I appreciate hearing from you. I agree that they should stay out of people's business. I don't think that any intervention was necessary or appropriate in the situation which we've been discussing, which is this dad who's now on probation who now has a $200 well, fine, has to take a parenting class because he had so, his son walk home from school. I don't think that I agree with uh, what, what the father, father's punishment was here and, and the way he handled that punishment, okay? So I don't think I agree with it. However, the it problem— be criminal. The problem with the state, and by the state I mean an organization that claims the monopoly privilege on the use of violence in a given landmass, um, is that it only has—this this state only has 
one punishment. There is only one punishment, and that's arrest, incarceration, probation, which is a threat of incarceration. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these kind of things. It has no other tools. This guy has to be given the, uh, you know, run through the, the mill. Now, in this particular instance, if he goes through his probation in the next 12 months uh, without any problems, the, the arrest will be removed from his record, so he won't have the permanent record issue. Is that what they said in the story? I missed that It does point. say that in, in the Blaze story. Amos is on the line in West Virginia listening to WVTS. Hey, Amos. Yeah, I, the main thing I had a problem with was just the 50-mile-per-hour uh, 50, 50 road. You know, the kid would have to walk on because some little boys and girls, they they get kind of distracted and really don't watch what they're doing. Uh, they may get too close to the road edge, that kind of thing. Other than that, I don't have any problem with the kid having to walk. But uh, the thing I wanted to say was, was that, you know, what if the adult didn't have own a car? If, if there was, say, no taxi service, no city bus, or you know, no other way of getting the kid home but walk, well, I wonder what they would rule in that kind of a case. A lot of times, um, parents where uh, where I'm from, they'll walk with the kids to school and then walk back. Um, I don't know how I don't know how old. I don't know what the developmental, the normal developmental stages are between six and eight, and I don't know if this kid is normal. And I, you know, I don't know these things, but. I think that the people we have to defer to here are parents. Thanks, Amos, for your call. Let's go to Abel. He's in New Hampshire. Abel, you're on Free Talk Live. Go. Howdy. Good to talk to you guys. You've got about 20 seconds. I'll, go ahead, Yeah, Abel. I'll be really quick. Uh, number one, uh, you know, why are so many kids walking home? I think kids should be in, at home. I think that the, the idea of somebody becoming a parent and, uh, and not being responsible uh, you know, offsetting that responsibility to the state, no less, is a foolish, foolish uh, proposition. Yeah, sending and your kids to a government school in the first place is certainly the the major problem here, and I'm glad you brought that point up, Abel. Thanks for your call tonight. We'll continue with Free Talk Live tomorrow on the Live Sunday edition. See you online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Have a great weekend. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com so you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. 
This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, May 30th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,253. Silver opened at $19. And Bitcoin is trading at $611.98. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code LIBERTY and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs online at affordablesound.com or call them up 512-459-5253. Support also comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours, voiceandexit.com. In the news, an investigation by Forensics Architecture, a research project based at London's Goldsmiths University and New York-based C2 Research, revealed that most drone attacks carried out by the CIA in Pakistan target private homes. The drone strikes usually occur in the middle of the night when families are home and asleep. The research showed 61% of drone strikes in Pakistan target domestic buildings, and more than 132 houses have been destroyed in at least 380 strikes. Out of the 1,500 killed, more than 200 were innocent civilians. A report by The Guardian reveals the NSA struggled to meet the demands of an unprecedented number of FOIA requests following documents released by Edward Snowden. Top officials reportedly discussed ways to fend off journalists, advocacy groups, and individuals who bombarded the agency with over 5,000 Freedom of Information Act requests between June 5th through June 12th of last year. The agency only received 800 such requests during the same period the previous year. And the 62nd Bilderberg meeting is set to take place from May 29th through June 1st in Copenhagen, Denmark. Bilderberg's press release detailed this year's official talking points, which include privacy, intelligence sharing, China's political and economic outlook, and other current events. In attendance will be 140 participants from 22 countries who maintain high-level positions in finance, academia, and media, along with a diverse group of politicians and experts from various industries. The group has fallen under scrutiny, though, due to the secrecy that surrounds the annual closed-door meeting. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online, rrbi.co, or by phone, 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, May 30th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Another milestone for the era of cryptocurrency as Dish decides to accept Bitcoin for payment. In a press release issued by the pay TV provider Thursday, Dish Executive Vice President and CFO Bernie Han says the decision was made as a way to deliver choice and convenience to the company's customers. According to Dish, the move makes them the largest company to accept Bitcoin payments. Coinbase was selected as the payment processor for the Bitcoin transactions, with customers choosing the cryptocurrency for online payments able to use the Bitcoin wallet of their choice. On Wednesday, activists and Ecuadorian indigenous community members held a protest outside the Permian Basin Petroleum Museum in Midland, Texas, demanding that oil giant Chevron take responsibility for damage done to the Ecuadorian Amazon rainforest. Activists condemn Chevron for refusing to pay for pollution left behind by Texaco, whom Chevron bought in 2001. Texaco was found guilty and fined nearly $19 billion by an Ecuadorian court. However, Chevron has refused to pay and countersued the Ecuadorian communities, accusing them of defrauding the court. <laughs> 